Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast on the 23rd of August, 2016. How wonderful. Hello. How wonderful. Hello. Yes. Very, very Hello. wonderful. How wonderful. How, How? Is, How? That, is that a more of a question or a How statement? Wonderful. How wonderful. On How a scale wonderful. of shit to wonderful, it's wonderful. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you were to compare those two things, if Those yes. are your only two options, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> No yeah. doubt about Roger that. Roger and I were singing the theme song before you started. It was catchy. And we were, and Jesse did not seem to like be able to hear that I was doing the guitar riff. You're no, confused no, about what I was doing. No, yes, no, no false. Never, this is what you were doing. You were going. You were going. Wah 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 wah. That's what you were doing, that, and I was like, "That's, <laughs> that's not the guitar I, riff." I never did you that. Were, I never once did. You're trying that. to signal the aliens, which doesn't work. Was. I was like, holy shit. I was shit, not I trying to sing back? to the aliens. If I was trying to sing to the aliens, it's because I blacked out and the aliens took over my brain. As yeah. an unbiased third party, I'm pretty sure whatever you did sounded a little bit like that. But Thank not, you. But not totally. Thank it you. The okay. truth Thank was. you for being perfectly impartial. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it contacting the aliens. It wasn't me. quite there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent is display of neutrality. You'll do, you'll do f just fine on this show. Yeah, no, Bioware must love me. I'm so neutral. Ah. <laughs> Our special guest today, Mr. Matt McMuscle, is better known perhaps as a member of Super Best Friends. Welcome. Oh, fantastic. Oh. You, you, you got our name right because our branding is so terrible. We have like <laughs> 300 different names, Super Best Friends, Best Friends, I bought Switch, two uh, Best Friends. And you got the current persona. You got the current gimmick, and I appreciate that. It's Thank mostly because I can't pronounce the Z thing, so I'm not yeah. even bother fucking trying. It's like, yes, yeah, so let's you, go with this. You, you see, John, Zaibatsu stands, it means corporation in Japanese, which sure. we are not. No. <laughs> what? That's the word. Super best friends liars, more like yeah. it. No, yeah, that's, that's, super that's best what's... liars. Yeah, we're very good liars. I'm not even here right now, really. So. Whoa! No. <laughs> Pre-recorded footage. I'll tell you what is here, however, a sponsorship from Crunchyroll.com slash TotalBiscuit that is sponsoring <gasps> this show today. Get your free trial over at Crunchyroll.com slash TotalBiscuit for unlimited high-definition anime, mm -hmm. if you so desire. Yeah. Yeah. Unlimited anime. Unlimited. More Limited. anime. More anime. Anime. Like, like food wars. More anime than is decent, really. Mm -hmm. uh, fair, a lot I of it sucks. But. I've I've watched an obscene amount of Sailor Moon uh, via Crunchyroll, so it's it's a pretty good service because then I can say I watch Sailor Moon a lot still because I love it. <laughs> That's, it's a there good thing go. to keep reminding people of. Uh, you brought yes. Food Wars, actually, Dodger. I just uh, caught, caught up on that. So we, I'm, I I'm a couple episodes two. behind, which has been killing me inside. Well, you, you, you missed some of the best stuff then. Uh, a, lo a, lot of very, okay. a lot of very serious Fine. food battling has been going on. I bet. There have been some serious food battles since the beginning of this. Frick a dick? Frick a dick. That is a shorthand for fricassee a penis. Frick a dick. Frick a dick. Is it? You know, I'm, I'm gonna open a restaurant called Frick a Dick. And we serve we serve wieners, hot dogs. Perfect. Um, Frick a dick. There there is a Asian uh, restaurant not too far from my parents live, and it's simply no no different pronunciation, no different uh, spelling. It's just called Hentai. The restaurant. Oh, uh, Hentai! Shout out to you get it. Don't tan if you're out there. Shout out. What? And <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I've never gone in because I don't want my my what's in my head to get shattered about what happens it. when you go in. You know, a stupid. lot of octopus dishes. Yeah, no, too many of them actually. A lot of, a lot of, of calamari. Man, these these eels, floors are so sticky. I don't know about this restaurant. Mm. <laughs> Maybe Jesus. not a good idea. You know what? Uh, my wife forced me to watch a couple of episodes of Umaru Chan. Which, oh, God. Uh, she, she said, uh, oh, this is what inspired the Gremlin Diva thing. I'm like, okay. It's, like, it's more like G Gremlin Diva sort of fused with Umaru Chan once certain yeah. people who had seen Umaru Chan were like, oh, yeah, I see, yep. <laughs> it, also, yeah. this person is the worst person in the fucking world. I just She's the worst! Oh my god! Whenever somebody watches that show and is like, "I am so Umaru Chan," I'm like, "What? You're a terrible what? fucking person. Yeah. You're a manipulative, <laughs> lazy sociopath <laughs> that exploits her hardworking brother and has no redeeming qualities at all. and constantly <laughs> lies for everybody." So angry. That's like 
for for anyone that's of a certain age, that's like saying like watching Back to the Future. I'm so Biff Tannen. It's like no, that's don't that's not a no. Good, he's a bad not person. A good thing. That's not a good thing. Yeah, it's like, it was like oh, she's Carson. so cute. It's like yeah, but she's horrible in every way. Like she she's an awful person. Like she's a legitimate sociopath. Like but I saw a gif once of her rolling on the ground playing video games. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> As anyone says to me, oh, I'm so like Amura Chow. I was like, great, I know who to avoid in future. Thank you for that warning. I know that you're awful. Awful in every you way. Thank you for heads up. Yep, yep. The, the first time when I've, I've seen the term weeb trash bag sort of personified in a character, I think, would be that. So it's like, no. And she's like, you want to watch more of it? I'm like, no, no. I, I was... <laughs> I fundamentally resent what's going on on screen. I don't want to I'm watch any so more of that. I'm so glad that you and I had the same reaction to that I don't show. see how any sane person couldn't. Like, I've had, she's awful. I've had so many people tell me to watch Umaru Chan, and every time I'm like, good. I go back to it sometimes thinking, maybe maybe I'll see growth in her. Maybe one I'm gonna day. I'm going to assume that's I'll the point of the growth. series. It it, it's... No? Okay. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that, then. I've seen. She just continues to be like, hey, Nissan. You want to stand in line for 48 hours to get this pillow for me so that I can go home and play video games? Sick. And then she goes home and plays video games while her brother stands in line for two days. And I'm like, I hate the brother because he's got no backbone. I hate the girl because she takes advantage of everybody. I hate everyone in this show. Anyways. You're very, uh, you're very passionate very about passionate. this. Yeah. I, I will say... Passionate. The only reason that you really need to subscribe to uh, Crunchyroll right now is Banania Cat Lurking in Bananas, which yep. is... Mm -hmm. I could. I I have bought now every banana. But there are banana products, and I've bought all of them. And I continue to introduce them one at a time to my wife's office or like areas around where she she usually is. Like <laughs> she went into a banana chan. What? It's called banania, and <laughs> the subtitle. Which it, the, the one thing I love about Japanese stuff is when they go very literal with the subtitles. Uh, and the sub this uh, the subtitle of what this is is cat lurking in bananas. They, they are cats that the live in bananas. Is that, there is yeah, no, the banana ex, no further explanation. And inside of the banana peel is a cat. Is a cat. Man, I'm old. I, I don't I understand don't... any of it, but I consistently buy uh, products of this and hide them around the house. Uh, it's I, I, I feel like Banania is straight up Transformers, right? They were yes. like, we need to make a show that's going to sell plushies of banana cats. Right. Let's do Pretty it. Much. That, that, it's I'm worked. fairly sure you that's are all like it is. Literally, you yeah, are I abhorred them all from Japan. Working. It cost me far too much. You know, that I, the best one was where I got the I got one that little, uh, hangs up and I put it on the back of her iPad stand. So she goes into her bedroom, she turns the iPad stand around, she's got to you know, lie down in bed and watch some shows and there's this fucking cat right there. And, she just, shh, and I just hear from my office like, John! <laughs> Stop buying this shit. <laughs> I, I'd like to imagine we live in a perfect world where a corporation somewhere was like, we have all these half a bottom of a banana. <laughs> like, we have all these half a top of a cat. And some guy made a call like, I know what to do. I know what Plus, to do. this was born. The anime, the merchandise. That's my hope. Okay. No, I'm, no, that that makes that makes sense because that's like that's like um you have one thing over there because their banana business failed. They have one thing over there because their cat plushy business failed, and then just the guy, yeah, like a light bulb above his head, and he's just like, if we make some type of cat banana cyborg, and they're like, <laughs> let's just let's just make a cute thing. Oh, that's it. Oh, he's gone. Hopefully, to grab a cat banana cyborg. Oh yeah, please maybe do. Not. I'm a huge fan of bananas too. Oh, he's got a banana shop, of course. Shark <laughs> bananas. Oh. <gasps> Wait, I have one. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. I got something too. Ready? I'm oh. not going downstairs to get all the bananas. That's not going to happen. It's a bird banana. <laughs> <sighs> Why is things in bananas so much? Fun? <laughs> I don't I had know. It really it's like you peel it on it until like, then. I can't wait to eat this banana. It's going to be so good. <laughs> It's like those um it's like those old cartoons where it was dogs but all of the dogs were different types of of beans. Oh. Beans. You guys oh, remember no. those? Oh lord. Oh, no. <laughs> that's oh, too big so, and not a banana. So that's, big. That, that's too big There's, and where, not a banana. Where's the banana? That's what I got. I know. I can throw a banana on it. What do you want from me? It's you should have. You should have basic gone human and got a decency. Dog beans. And put it in its mouth and be like, "Yeah, I got a shark banana too." <gasps> This. 
Oh, oh I, I'm gonna have to watch this fish. video. There's apparently a video on YouTube called The Existential Horror of Banania. I was just like, yeah, that's... Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds about weird. right. It's, I wonder if it's it's actual commentary on why this is totally horrific. I, I'll have to watch that later. Yeah, yes, anyway, control the cops of Shuttle Biscuit. Go get your free trial. Go watch Unlimited Anime, including <gasps> Banania. That'll make your life a lot better. It's and called Mama Shiba. Go and watch is, all... Go and oh, watch the bean every thing. episode of Mama right. Shiba. It's so good. It's just people going to eat their food, and then when they're about to take the bite, some part of their food is actually a dog. Oh. And it tells, and it tells them trivia. That's highly I, inconvenient. It's so weird. They're so weird. You got to watch them. I must be Shiba is what it's what is it called? M A M E S H I B A. Mama Shiba. No, They're so no. good. I watched them in college. I just now thought of them again for the first time in years. <laughs> I have to be spelling banania wrong cuz all I get is like this. No. No, that's not it. <laughs> not even close, nope. actually. Then I'm spelling it super wrong. Can I just all right, so I clicked the video. Uh-huh. This little girl opens her little bento box lunchbox. Uh-huh. And inside is a little bean. And the bean turns into a dog. It goes, and the cutest word ever goes, Did you know a hippo sweat is pink? <laughs> and the girl goes, Ooh, and that's and then it and that's, that's the show. Else. That's yeah. Okay. What? What? There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. You gotta watch them all. They're great. It's ideal. What's the the podcast? We do occasionally talk about video games. We do occasionally talk about video games. That means stop talking, Jesse. Coming up on the show, we'll be talking about the games that we've been playing this week. What what are you so horrified at? Yeah, has that never happened before? Has he ever shut you down that hard? I mean, I shut him down usually pretty hard. And at the end of the episode, rather than, like, she acknowledges it and goes... I'm not hungry anymore and closes like <laughs> Well yeah, I mean it's it's a living thing. Why I would wouldn't you? be hungry anymore. No. There's a dog in it. Why would you? No, but the dog is the bean. It's just a talking bean that has dog. It's in just it. the talking bean. There's dog I'd be like, shut up, bean, get in my belly. You'd be like, I have more facts. Much, much, much. <laughs> I have more trivia to tell you. I don't give video, a games, shit. video games, video games, <laughs> video games. What have we been playing this week? Who wants to throw a hat into the ring to begin? Uh, I'll, 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 since you used a ring analogy, uh, oh. I've been playing uh, King of Fighters uh, 14. Which, oh, yes. Yeah, Very comes good reviews out. on that thing. Yeah, no, it, I uh, was able to snag a, an earlier copy and uh, was really always down on that game. When I played it at PAX East, just, uh just uh, the slowest loading, like it just was sluggish game, wasn't really mm-hmm. into it. And I'm, I'm a fan of the the series, but now they finally have like the, the full roster and everything game is just really, really, it's more feature complete than street fighter five was at launch. Like, which it wouldn't take much, but you know, it, it wouldn't take much it. because it does have 56 characters rather than like what, 18. I can't remember yeah. what the final number was, but, uh, you know, I haven't tried it online yet. That's kind of the litmus test for most fighting games it about is, yes. whether that uh, that community uh, goes anywhere. But hilarious endings. And that's one of those things. Street Fighter Five. A lot of people are up in arms. There's no arcade. Mo- there's no traditional yeah. arcade mode. And King of Fighters, though, has a really uh, pretty good one since you have so many characters. There's like FMVs during the story mode and you get a really long well drawn that's the key thing well drawn uh, uh ending scenario that's tons of um references to older games lots of characters that don't appear on the main roster show up just to go hey i'm still alive they didn't kill me off so, uh, <laughs> uh, really enjoying that so far and um what do you reckon to the art style because i mean it's been somewhat controversial i believe is this the first uh, 3d king well i say 3d 3d render it's not actually a 3d fighting game it's, no, it's still no, a 2d it's fighting not. game but it's it's uh, you know they rendered the characters in engine it's not hand drawn or anything it's, along those lines what it's do you think? not their it's not their first because there was a sub series on the ps2 and xbox called uh the maximum impact series which was a horrible 3d game like it yeah. was was clunky and not not really that fun to play every but series seems to go down that path at one at least point once don't or they? Twice. and then realize it's yeah. a terrible idea has it yeah. ever gone right i can't remember a single Single example of one that's actually worked. I mean, technically, Mortal. No. I mean, no, do you count right. Shaolin Monks? I mean, I, I don't think you do, do you? Because Shaolin Monks wasn't really a fighting game; it was a brawler. No, it was a good it wasn't. game, but there was a versus mode in that, and it was, it played was more like Power Stone or whatever. But yeah. um, I can't think. I, like I've heard people say that the Street Fighter EX series, the later ones, like there was one particular that was like 
deemed pretty decent, but overall, uh, yeah, I, I agree. It doesn't really work out for the most part. Uh, aside from that, um, I played the Shadow Warrior 2 uh, Gamescom build. Yes. Because uh, cause, uh, uh, thanks to your wife, who kind of got me, uh, uh, like, advised me where to uh, ask where, about Who that. to talk to get hold of that. Yeah, They're actually being talk. quite liberal with who they give yes. that to. Yeah, yeah, very. Uh, I played that four or five times, just that one demo build, because it kept changing. I saw several enemies I didn't see the first two times. Yes, yeah. Stuff like that. So I, I was really enjoying cool. that. And that uh, game is it's an interesting departure from you know the, the first Shadow Warrior. You know, they they went a bit borderlands with it. They yeah, went a I'll bit know. Uh, I mean, I, I say procedural generation, but I know that conjures up uh, memories and images these days of No Man's Sky. It's like, no. It does. Uh, but the point is that in the build, and uh, actually in the game as well, the levels are going to be, to some degree, randomly generated. Not completely, but elements it's, of them will be, so it changes it's, every time. It's like things kind of just either get mirrored, like stuff that was on the left is now on the right, but yes. it still feels like a cohesively designed map, which yeah. is kind of what I... like. Because like you mentioned, Shadow Warrior 1 was very, very very linear it's basically corridors yeah, I mean, it was a traditional a fps you know with yeah, properly with three, designed levels with some like secret you know pass or whatever yeah. but i uh, really enjoying when i played this at pax east again uh it was like i was blown away by it and uh uh really had fun doing that and i played some abzu on a uh, ps4 uh which i i i like journey and stuff but I, I kind of feel strange about looking at all the disgusting things that are in the ocean and trying to somehow, hopefully, we can we can nuke the oceans one day and get rid of all these horrible wow. people that live down there. I think wow. you have a bit of a chip so on your shoulder in terms of marine life here. But. So, so sick of these things. You know what? You know what a jellyfish is? An evil bag. That's all it really is. An evil it, bag it, of pain. A bag filled with pain. It's all it does. It's all it does. And, you know, whales to some extent are also evil bags, but um, uh, <laughs> throwing shade on you oceans. Someone's got to do it. I'm so I take it they didn't drag you into the uh, Georgia Aquarium when you were down there for Moma Khan at all. No, I love the aquarium. It's it is awesome. Gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a very, that's a very contrasting view on two things. I, I throw shade on the, that's because the sea life is prison. Yeah. They're prisoners there. Yeah. They're under our control there. Yeah. As it um, should be. Uh, Abzu, though, to be serious, it's like really, really beautiful. And it's one of those things that I'm like, glad this is three hours because you don't have enough here to carry four hours. Well, it's uh, like a very specific story, you know. Yeah, no, it, it is. And you're not doing much. But I am I am amazed by even like the second hour, which I'm at. I'm still like amazed by how beautiful it is when it transitions to another area and the color tones change and the, the sea life changes. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Like, or in the second hour that you kind of thought that would, that gimmick would kind of go away, but, uh, Oh my God. Are you what? another person who hasn't finished the game yet? No, I haven't. Not yet. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> TV. Did you ever finish it? I didn't get around to it. I'm busy. <laughs> You're <killing> I'm <laughs> Oh well, you want to talk because there's something with the ending. I'm just told that the ending has a thing, like a sting. The end is totally different. Like, oh my god, it like turns into a completely different thing in the oh, last hour, and you guys you, just keep that's like, amazing. So down when you get to the end, does crafting open up? <laughs> and like no. resource management, and, no. and that's when you have slots. to stop mining. <laughs> you have to start mining. Mine these whales for their blubber. You know. Uh, so you want to talk to someone about the ending because no one you know has finished it? Or? I mean, we can't talk about the ending on here anyway sure. um, because I don't want to spoil anybody. But my God, this feels like Hot to Full Boyfriend all over again. Everybody's <laughs> like, wasn't it, wasn't it funny how you got to just like spend, you know, a few minutes romancing a dove and then you move it on with your life? And I was like, no, wasn't it amazing when you played the entire game and it turned into a murder mystery? Who else played the whole thing? And so I didn't. Few people did. So but, no, most people didn't play it past the first few hours of pigeon dating. Also. Why not? <laughs> it turns into a murder mystery. Because most of us didn't actually enjoy this. the game. We were just playing it for streams or ironically. You, you actually <sighs> liked it. Yeah. Yeah. You were yeah. the one, I guess. Somebody had God. to. Uh, yeah. But that's all I've been playing this week, so. So anyone else wants to throw the proverbial hat in the ring? Uh, last week we um, we talked about playing Grow Up, 
Grow Up, grow yes. Up. Grow, yeah. you know grow, what, yeah. The sequel to Grow Home. Yeah. I've never played Grow Home, but I played Grow Up yesterday. Sure. And uh, everybody was saying that it's similar, that Grow Home is like kind of a smaller version of the same game. So this is the same thing, just like on a bigger scale. Yes, that, that um, was that's the whole po point of it, I believe. Yeah. Uh, at first, I was not sure if I liked it. I'll be real. All of the reviews are so good on it. Like, people really, really love it. And I didn't realize that it was going to be a very physics-based game. Yeah, it is. I didn't know that that was, like, the whole concept. So when I first started controlling this adorable little robot, I was like, wow, he handles kind of wonky. And, like, I'd jump on a thing, and he would just, like, like keep going because he'd have a bunch of force behind him and he'd totally miss the mark and fall and i'd be like no it was really really frustrating at first but like as you get more abilities and more ways to like control him and and get to like specific places um it becomes really really fun and the whole like scheme of the game at least at the beginning is to uh find different forms of flora and fauna on the planet and oh, that uh, sounds an awful lot like a game we've been discussing recently doesn't it yeah pretty much everybody in my stream was like oh this is a great no man's sky stream yeah i was like, well, it's <laughs> like no no you don't understand this can't be a no man's sky stream there's actual gameplay going on oh, the shade! oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah like the further that i got into it the the more fun it was i gotta say I unlocked a bee costume and I was like, awesome. Put the bee costume on, I was super, super into it. And then it turns out that the bee costume turns you into a swarm mother. So every time you meet an insect on the planet, it follows you. Okay. And holy fuck, that got stressful fast. I would turn around and there would just be a cloud of like little buzzing things. And I was like, I need to take this off. Like this is stressing I me I don't out. want this responsibility. <laughs> I hate this, I can't do this. Is that the end game name for it? A swarm mother? That's what I, I mean. That's what I. That's what oh, okay. I the game is not specifically that like say a, that. That sounds like a dire term. Mm -mm. A swarm mother. That's ooh, I, that sounds like a like a Dark Souls boss. <laughs> I think we were thinking it of it along the lines of like StarCraft. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like everybody just wants to know what's swarm up host. and what they should be doing. And I was like, if I could control you guys, that would be great. I would tell you to fuck off. But I can't. Yeah, you're just all up in my business forever, and I can't do this. So, uh, yeah, like that. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Anything else <laughs> from me? Oh well, uh, yes. I'm still making Jesse. my way. I'm still making my way through. I am Setsuna. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I've <laughs> I played Death Road to Canada after you guys talked good, about it. So good, good. I'm, I'm glad that that finally happened. Um, I really want to add more people into it. That that game creates really funny stories. Like, yes. like really funny shit happens. Um, we found Gerard. Oh, every time that I played, I started with uh, Evil Dodger and Sam. Yes. And. Uh, we picked up Gerard on the side of the road and he was like, oh, thank, thank you so much for saving me. I'm so glad we're all together. And then immediately was like, but I feel like somebody isn't pulling their weight and I think that Sam should leave. <laughs> we were like, excuse me? And had to like kick him out of the car. Um, what else happened? We picked up Force and Force did the same thing where he was like, yay, we're all friends, so excited. We traveled for a couple of days and then he stole all of our food and ran. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. Jeez. <laughs> Look, you asshole. Uh, Peanut Butter Gamer, you like designed him to be a murder monster. So um, I mean, I didn't specifically do that, but apparently that's what that combination of attributes does on that game. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, TB put a pack out into the world that you can download. Yeah. That, like has seventeen a bunch of us. characters. That's basically like all Polaris, like Polaris and friends kind of pack or whatever. Mm, uh, yeah. Though one of them is literally just Dodger reskinned. I think it's called Dodger Clone or there's, Evil Dodger. There's I two of them. Yeah, there's like Evil Dodger and then just Normal Dodger. And Normal yeah. Dodger looks like a an asshole artist. So I was like kind of into both of those. Um, what was the other one? I can't remember. There were just a couple of really funny stories. <laughs> that that <laughs> game generates that. I mean, I think that yeah. uh, any game that lets you name characters... And those characters are likely to die at some point or betray you is always going to generate that kind of humor. Uh, <gasps> oh my god, I remember now. I uh, I found a grenade for the first time and I was like, a grenade, awesome. And there were so many monsters 
And we kept hearing a dog barking. And I was like, oh my God, there's a dog somewhere in here. I opened up a door and there were a bunch of monsters. And I was like, I'm going to use this grenade. And I killed the dog. (laughs) I went back in that room and I was like, oh no, (laughs) the dog was in here. The dog is dead. It was very sad. There's a, you know, are you familiar with a Lakeview cabin collection on Steam? I've heard Uh, of that. I don't think so. Uh, really, really interesting, like kind of horror, like think about scribble knots meets horror movie conventions. Interesting. Okay. Um, definitely check it out if you have a minute, but like, um, you're, 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 you, you know, in the scribble knot kind of art style, you and a bunch of survivors are on a, uh, like Island cabin in the middle of uh, the woods. And, um, there's all these various like implements, like traps and killers show up uh, systematically throughout the night. And you have to, home alone their asses to oh, death okay. like, you know right that and sounds amazing <laughs> it, it's a really fun game i recommend it but uh there's a little dog like uh that's running around the dog can be used for various things but when you first start out the game you're not sure of the controls it's basically like two buttons like pick up and manipulate or use and if you pick up the dog like you'll be like oh yeah a psh- oh and you threw the dog into the water or into a wood chipper. Or a, <laughs> don't no, know. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and some JoJo's uh, Bizarre Adventure shit. It, it, it really is like right out the gate, just dog death to make. But I mean, it's your own fault, really, if it happens. But because uh, like, again, you have toss or throw and the dog is like this, like it's a little pug, basically, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, we, we had a moment where we played that uh, on our channel. And like, that was the first thing that happened. I was guiding uh, my friend to like, all right, now you go, oh, you threw the dog into the water. Oh, and he's like, I didn't know it was going to happen. So, <laughs> it's again, like death row to Canada. Like p- lots of people have different experiences because there's so many variables that could mm-hmm. happen. So uh, uh, yeah, I've been meaning to get into a uh, death row to Canada because I've driven on that road. The so actual death road. Yeah, yeah, the actual death road yeah, from Florida no. to Canada. <laughs> Which does not take 14 days, as it turns out. <laughs> not, not, not at all. Like, I played it for about, like, five minutes, and I was like, oh, shit, I got to get back to that. But, like, yeah, I really want... I like, I'd like to stream that at some point, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's very fun. It is, yeah. Well, I'd always play the custom character mode, you know, just so you have stories. It, it generates humor for you, you know? It makes your job easier as a streamer, so... All right. And there are a idea. lot of options to create characters. Like, there I want to make yeah. more people. <laughs> yeah, totally. We should expand the pack. Absolutely. There's only, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just threw 17 together in about 15 minutes. And sort of towards the end, I was just like, yeah, I mean, you guess. I can't make this actually look like him. So whatever. <laughs> um, I've mm-hmm. run out of funny things now. But there you go. It's a fun game, though. It's, it's definitely good. Yeah. Cool. I enjoyed that one a lot. Been playing anything else this week? Not that I can think of, actually. Two entire video games in the whole week. Wow. You've been really working hard by the sounds of it. I've been trying to think if there's anything else, really. Anyway. Wow. What a what a pressured statement. Just oh, saying. yeah. Look at you, you lazy piece of shit. Only two video games. You uh, say that. So great. Like, My show's 45 minutes long John today. Don't also. constantly do that to me. <laughs> so- well, I mean, do you count games for work or do you count games for just fun? Absolutely. I, never, I, don't, I don't mention games that I play like for my channel yeah and yeah i I, like if if like i was to go back there's like uh, like five things i played but like i don't it's you know it's old stuff it's it's let's plays or whatever else we're doing but like yeah i just mentioned the games i was just you know having fun with but uh i mean there's a there's a game we play called uppers on the vita in in japan where i I see just you're kind of shaking your head there I am hoping I know what this is. Uh, it's a game where you're tough Japanese boys and you have to beat up everyone to impress girls. Oh, girls yeah. Like, what's you playing that? Yeah. Yeah. Girls going like, give them a pile driver. I'll give you my phone number. It actually then, was surprisingly entertaining. That's it, also really what it's like in real life, too. Let's be well, honest. Yeah, but well, then the guys, when they get the phone numbers, they throw them away. They oh. just, yeah! they that's just want to know that they can get the girl's phone number. Absolutely. They don't actually Not, want them. It's, it's no, to prove a point. That's, that's the hardest bad. shit I've ever heard. That's yeah. the hardest shit. Like, I don't even want your phone number. <laughs> exactly. You know, I don't even want your phone. And number. and when the girls see that you don't even care, they're like they 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 they, they swoon. They're like, of "Oh course. my god, that's so hot." 
What I tell you, this is the realest game there ever was. Yeah. So that that yeah. thing's really fun, but the the combat is pretty basic across all characters. But it's still you know fun for what it is. But I, uh, I did enjoy watching him do like overhead bicycle kicks just over and over and over yeah. again and not stop. He's like, when will when will this end? Like this physics defying <laughs> nonsense. Uh, I mean, you could smash people through walls in this game. This was so this was a Vita game, but it only came uh, out yeah. in Japan. Yeah, yeah, oh, it, it was, it's. Its pre-order numbers were so low that they were considering canceling the game when it was like close to finishing. Oh God! And then they released it, and then it also like the numbers reflected that. So yeah, unlikely it'll ever it'll ever you know get translated. But I mean, it's it's a beat 'em up, so it's you kind of have fun just playing it regardless if yeah, you understand of course. The story or not. Story is so. not that important. It's a shame they didn't and, release it on a format that wasn't completely dead. Yeah, that'd be nice, but you know what? J- Japan still wants to give the Vita uh, uh, some tries here and there. Some well, I mean, that's where all the games come from at this point. It's like, why are yeah. there so many uh, Japanese-style dungeon crawlers? Like, there's 20 of them coming out this month. It's like, yeah, that's the Vita in Japan, all right. Yeah, but you just finished that sentence. Five visual novels just came out on the Vita. There right you go. So there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, how? I mean, I have to assume the console's not doing terribly over there if they're continuing to actually release games at that frequency, even I, if I they're think, not very expensive ones. I think the software does well, but I, I still, I don't, I haven't looked at Japanese like hardware sales Let numbers in Google years. So, yeah, uh, Japanese hardware sales for video games. I want to know how many of these bloody things they're actually uh, shifting, because they usually go by week. I want to yeah. see more footage of that game. <clears throat> That's great. It's like uh, I went on VG Charts. It's like uh, here's it from six years ago. I was like, that's not at all helpful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, especially it's VG. Yeah, because usually they did release like a weekly list, didn't they? Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, but it's probably doing better than like you know the Wii U. I guess I don't know. I think those are pretty neck and neck for a while. I mean, whatever it is, it's guaranteed to be doing better than the Xbox. You know, it just, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Xbox is sort of that nice little meter stick where it's like, well, if you're doing worse than the Xbox, then I mean, you're beyond dead at this point. You Congratulations, might well be the Atari Lynx. You're not the worst loser. Yeah, you know, pretty pretty ridiculous. I'm trying to find like an accurate list of weekly Japanese hardware sales. I, they used to pop up on video game websites all the time. They'd always used to talk about that, but uh, I because so. I because it's like that's a th- that's the state of Japan, right? Like no one really it doesn't matter. And like before, it was like, oh, look at the GBA outselling the PS3. Oh, look at the Wii doing this or like uh, you know whatever. And now it's like uh, Japanese hardware sales like generally are all down. Like they don't. Yeah, because they went all mobile, didn't they? For the most yeah, part, like much. it used to be the 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 yardstick by which everything was actually measured. There's a uh, some interesting stuff from March of 2016 that I found where the Vita was actually the third best selling console. There you um, go. Yeah, and the, the only the only home console that was beating the Vita was the PlayStation Four. The 3DS sold 142,000 units that month, and the Vita sold 107,000 units that month, and the Wii U huh. sold 33,000, and the Xbox One sold like 910. The, what? It's, yeah, that's yeah. The, that, the Xbox in Japan is a disaster. Guess, it's always been a disaster. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, but yeah, just absolutely horribly. But it, it that's actually way more than I expected. Obviously, that was like half a year ago, but that's some fairly healthy sales. I mean, uh, Japan was always traditionally, apparently NeoGAF has the numbers, but unless someone wants to link them, I'm bloody not going to go and search through that place. <laughs> that's a wretched hive of scam and villainy. But... It used to be a case that Japan was a very um, killer app oriented market. Like, uh, yeah, they'd always be like, "Oh, the new Dragon Quest is out. That means whatever console has it just sold five million units in a week, you know, or whatever." Yeah. I don't know if that's still true. I know it used to be, but that was about at least a generation ago. That's. I think that's the main point. Is that a generation ago, uh, Japan was still considered like part of the core of the gaming world yes and since then the gaming world has moved on from japan and japan exists and creates some amazing titles but the core gaming world is like a buy like japan's been left behind when it comes to that they're known for gaming but the rest of the world is like I don't think they're dictating the pace anymore i mean obviously they're the you know they're, they're manufacturing the majority of the consoles but they're not necessarily, you know, the world is not sort of going by Japan's beat as as it used to. Mm-hmm. We're not so concerned about the latest and greatest release from Japan. 
which is feels weird. As I remember that, you know, especially when I, you know, we were teenagers, that mysticism of, oh, God, what, Jap- what is Japan playing now? You know, and it's yep. like, oh, God, Japan's so cool. They get everything six months before we do. Yep. Not and that's not true at yeah. all. No. Like, e- even genres where Japan specialized in, like, let's say, uh, Street Fighter or whatever, it's like now, now, like, it always sold well, but like Mortal Kombat X like destroyed like Street Fighter Four, Street Fighter Five in sales, and that's that. Like and and RPGs, Final Fantasy, like any Western RPG sells better than Final Fantasy in the West now. Like yeah. you know, your Skyrims, yeah. your Fallout's, or whatever. And um, absolutely, I'm trying to think of other stuff. Like I think even um, Gran Turismo doesn't do nearly as well. Well, one when one gets released once every thousand years, thousand years, yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, I when think the moons Forza... align and the planetary <laughs> auras are just right, we will receive the car racing game. And it just seems like the, those genres that they once dominated. Like the only one I'd say is like character action. Like you know, yeah, like, that's uh, still your gods of May, that. Your devil may cries, your revengeances, your your whatever. It's like mostly still platinum no... games is there. You know, you yeah, can't mostly really beat platinum that. games. Yeah, and but... like p- platformers, I guess when Nintendo puts out a platformer, like who else is putting out? big triple a plot like what was the last Nobody. i can't even remember like knack oh, oh, does God, anyone remember knack, knack. But, i don't but, think oh, anyone yeah. remembers knack and rightfully but so everything coming out of there is very niche like except yes. for nintendo every once in a while nintendo <laughs> comes up with something that's amazing and changes the world but even then every other time nintendo comes up with something that barely anybody plays yeah. so, like it's all a bunch of niche stuff coming out of japan which is cool because then you can find stuff where it's like you're fighting for women to woo over you and give you your phone numbers, which is freaking hilarious and awesome. Which is cool, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, it, it's one of those things where I think it's crazy to think about. Te- to, in the year two thousand, uh, like Final Fantasy VIII was still coming out, like that was the shit, and everyone was like, "Another the f- this is a sequel to seven, y'all. This shit's gonna be crazy." I mean, I imagine fifteen <laughs> still gonna be a big deal, but you know, sure. yeah, you're right though; it, it isn't as crazy as it was. Uh, incidentally, I did get some figures, so there's some interesting stuff here. Um, so the the sales figures are certainly not as explosive as they were in March. I wonder what came out in March to drive the sales as fast as they are. But, uh, I mean, last week uh, the PlayStation Vita shifted eleven thousand units, and it was still ranked third in hardware sales. Uh, it's tw- they sold twice as many as the Wii U. They sold six thousand units less than the PS4. The 3DS is still like tripling the sales of the PS Vita. But interestingly enough, the Vita in Japan has sold. Two million more units than the PlayStation Four has. Well, I, I mean, it, it's been out longer, yeah. Not by right. much, though. No, not by much. You're right, you're right. I mean, that's a significant gap. You know, um, that's that, that's very interesting to me because it's always that thing about how Japan, like you know, just mobile anything, like anything handheld, because yes. they spend so much time outside yeah. going into trains, Monster uh, Hunter cafes, know, stuff Monster like Hunter that. Monster Hunter cafes. That you know that amazing Kirby cafe that they opened up, where it's a Kirby themed cafe and all the pastries and food are like Kirby themed. Yo, if, sounds if great. You, if you come in alone, if you have no date, no no one, which in Japan is really really like prevalent and common. Yes, but um, they will put a plush Waddle D in the chair next to you to keep you company. <laughs> Yo, yes. It's Sugar. amazing. Will you go, will you pictures go of it. Will you go with me to this and we go in separately and then we, we have to, yeah, we have to face it <laughs> out. Just take photos of each other. Like, look at this pathetic loser. We just post them <laughs> yeah. on the internet. I love it. Let's do it. Duh. Yes. It's- it's yeah, that's amazing. Man. There's really dire pictures of people sitting with these Waddle D's. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm looking at like, all just this- Kirby cafe. Japan. I'm looking at all these game sales. This is some really interesting trends. I mean, in the top 50 uh, this week, nine of the games are from PlayStation Vita, which, mm. you know, sounds crazy because in the West, there's probably not a single one anywhere Neither near it. Nobody plays them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, they're not the top sellers. Most of those are 3DS. Like, of the top 10, about eight of them are 3DS games. Mm. Um, you know, Ratchet and Clank, I think, being the only exception. Um, the top-selling Vita games, uh, Tukin and Two, uh, which was that sort of demon slash monster hunter slash Dynasty Warriors ish game, yeah. Minecraft, um, on on Vita, selling very well. Uh, there's another East game, Lacrimosa of Dana, 
Uh, GQ Powerful Pro Basketball 2016. It's yeah. powerful basketball. Powerful. powerful pro basketball. And then a bunch of stuff that you probably haven't heard of, like um, Genki Toki 7 Pirates, another Idol Master game, Yoshi Yomurai, whatever the hell that is. Um, uh, uh, there's shitloads of stuff, actually. There's mm -hmm. fucking hell. Dragon Quest Heroes 2 apparently exists. Wasn't aware of that. And it's on the PlayStation Vita already in Japan. Uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, apparently, the Vita is still doing pretty damn well over there. Not anywhere else, but pretty damn well over there. Hm. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's like yeah, the interesting stuff because we haven't heard about Jap. That, that's why I even brought it up because I'm like I don't even know if it does well anymore because game sites and and whatever they, they don't, don't cover it, it which is weird. Anymore. You know, we're in the internet era, and you'd think that yeah. that information would be readily available. It is, but it's just not being reported. Yeah, yeah, this goes back to the to the gap between Western and and Japanese audiences, where Western journalism doesn't give a shit about it. No, and I imagine if you went to a Japanese website, it'd be everywhere. Yeah, so. uh, and I imagine Western journalism used to care when it sold magazines. Yeah, you know, when, when it got when that, clicks and views, the mysticism yeah. was still there, where people were like, "Oh God, I'm really interested about." It. And it goes back to our point earlier that Japan is no no longer really leading the way. So yeah. we don't really care what Japan's doing because Japan doesn't set the pace for everybody else anymore. Plus, plus, game journalists they go, oh, I have to I have to fly to Japan uh, to cover. I'll do it. Ass. If I gotta be, in, I'll do it for journalism. Yeah, for but, journalism. But, for journalism. But, but, but you can imagine though, like a couple of people going, eh, I don't. I can imagine most of games journalism going, eh, when confronted with actual work. <laughs> yes, that's just how it <laughs> tends to work these days. I will say, shout oh. out to Japan for making me excited for the Olympics. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a thing, what a, yeah. What a wild, like, intro. For, I was like, all right, shit. And then Prime Minister is Mario, so F it. That was great. <laughs> no, that no, was no, great. No. And they're like, see you in 2020. I was like, holy shit, I might go right. in 2020. <laughs> see how messed up that thing? Because it would be great. <laughs> it would be interesting. It'll certainly be cleaner. They're pushing for actual, like, Got, people are actually starting petitions to have actual video games in the Olympics in 2020. I mean, if it's going to happen at any yeah. time, I'll stop there, right? Yeah, right? yeah. That'd be crazy. The, the only other place would be Korea. Like Korea, yeah, South actually, Korea, fuck yeah. it. Uh, South Korea's South Korea's Olympics would only be video games. Only stuff. And they'd win Blizzard. every single one of them, except for yeah. Dota. Yeah. They won't win Dota, but everything else. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what else are we in place we can... Did anybody else play Oculus? Yes, I played a bit of Oculus. I, yes, played, yeah. I played it a bit too, actually. That game is fun. That game, I I feel like it wasn't it wasn't extremely fun the first time through, and then after you unlock like being able to select your starting heroes and who like runs yes. your group and stuff, it gets like really I, fun. I had the problem where people were like, "Go to the hub and you can select stuff," and I was like, "I don't see a hub. How do I get to a because hub?" Because you don't get the hub until you die once. You don't get the yeah. hub. Yeah, just very good at leading a mob to kill people, and so I just like. Went around destroying shit and got like really far in the game. It was like, "There's what do I do? There's no hub." But if yeah, you and then you eventually hub. lose, and then you do discover that actually there is a hub, and that's where the replayability comes from. You know, the levels are pretty randomly generated. You can choose your starting here. You can unlock new heroes and powers and stuff. I mean, I I, I like the game. It's fun. I love the art style. The art style's hilarious. Yeah, uh, I I, I'm not convinced by it's the game's longevity. I'm not the sort of person that plays games a lot to die and then unlock something, die and then unlock something, you know, the whole rogue mm. style of doing things. I'm not into that, the really. Like, the, like, slow progression crawl. Yeah, I don't care. Like, that, that never really entranced me as much as it does others. Uh, I mean, the gameplay to me, it's fun. Mm. I don't think it has much depth. Because, know? because like, if you're going to make the comparison to Pikmin, like, it's the exact same thing when you attack stuff in Pikmin. It's very much like Oclos, but yes. it seems to be that that's that's the only thing. Like, that's Pikmin, all you do. Yeah. problem solving. Whereas puzzles. Pikmin had other stuff. Yeah, it had puzzles yeah, yeah, and things like that. Yeah. I mean, what is there is fun. And, like, I, you know, it happens with almost every Devolver game, but, like, Fork Parker is an... Un Forkus Parkerus, of course is, he is. Yeah, is an unlockable character, and like there's hot my hotline Miami guys in there somewhere. So uh, that that stuff is all fun. But I mean, the game is like I, I even forget how much was it. It was like, uh, it's like ten fifteen bucks. Yeah, it's, see, it's not I full mean, price. Yeah, so it's you know at the end of the day, it's you know a, a simple fun diversion, but it, it's definitely interesting. I can't see, I can't say there's been many Pikmin likes. Uh, no, released in no. the last long time. So the one thing that I would say is that Jesse's uh, trying to speak and he's not allowed. <laughs> Jesse, go for it. 
I just have shameless promotion. Enter oh, okay. code. Fuck you. Okay, I so. <laughs> in the game. I'm in the game. Oh, shut up. Go, Jesse Cox, go. Enter it into the code in the, uh, in the like, hub screen. He'll There's happily sell out like... to anybody and anything. Don't worry. <laughs> Yo, that's a... I've followed this game since January of this year. I have loved it since then, and they put me in the game. Did they pay ah. you for your likeness? Nope. Then I don't want it. I don't want, you're a sucker their... is what you yeah, are. Yeah, no, a he's too honorable for that. He has I, don't too want, I, don't want, I don't want their Greek money. That's like <laughs> food on the toilet anyway. I, I, I Damn. Would... So, sorry, Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Austerity um, measures. What I was going to say is the one thing I did notice every time I played was that it would be like easy boss, easy boss, easy boss, easy boss, fucking hard boss. Like it Fuck felt like Hera. It was, Fuck Hera. It was like and really, everything really, really, to do with really her. easy for the first three or four bosses. And then it would get really hard. All like, of a sudden, who did yeah. you fight? Like, what were the bosses you fought? Hera's hard. TB's right. But Hera's a pain Hera. in the ass. I fought Hermes. I fought Narciss Narcissus. I fought Artemis. No, not Narcissus. Artemis is, is, Artemis. A, is a tough fight where you have to I keep can't remember. Like, that's the problem with that. There's fight. the one. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it Ares that, where you start with two in the arena and then he like jumps down? Yeah, Ares is you have to fight other people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I did that one twice. Um, yeah, it just felt like... I don't know. There were there were a couple of bosses where it repeated, but if I hit them first, then it was like easy mode. And if I hit them by like the fourth or fifth boss, I would go from having a full mob to just myself and like Jeez. squeak by. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It felt like it felt like the difficulty ramped at a certain point. Sorry, half the uh, the cameras have frozen up and the VoIP is in the process of crashing, but it hasn't crashed yet. Ooh. So oh, I'm gonna like not fuck with it until the break, so I can fix it okay. during the break. So sure. Like, let's not. I'm not gonna screw with anything because that's a terrible idea. Wait till the break <laughs> yeah. to have a chance to fix it. We're close enough to the break that it's fine. Yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be all right. The the, the, the sound is still coming through, so I'm fine with it. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's it's okay. You know, it's it's not. An incredible game, but it's good for blowing off a bit of steam hey, as far as I'm concerned. The code, go, Jesse, go. <laughs> no, that doesn't make it any better at all. It That's does. just it's, shameless it's narcissism. What a showman. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make the game better. What a coxman. <laughs> Yo, speaking of shows, uh, I played a game this week that was insane. So, uh, Mr. Robot released a, a mobile Oh, the Mr. Yeah, Robot game? The, yeah, the ARG thing, yeah. So mm -hmm. it is essentially so it's by the guys who made Oxen Free. So if you played Oxen Free, oh you, really? Yeah, you wow. know that the uh, Oxen Free is essentially a lot of conversations, a lot of crazy choices, yeah. those pop up bubbles, right? They've taken that formula and put it in a game that is texting based. So the whole premise is you exist in that world of Mr. Robot and you find a phone on the ground and start getting like harassing messages from the previous owner which takes you down this rabbit hole of uh, sort of getting you involved in the Mr. Robot universe. And um, there's text messages and responses, and it's basically the same kind of premise of you're sort of weaving your world through, uh, weaving your way through this story by interacting with all these different people who message you. There's crazy choices that you can make. At one point, you can literally threaten a dude by sending a kid a message that his dad like goes to prostitutes. So, like you can be a total like scumbag. What? Yeah, you can be like. So, so it's like an internet simulator. Uh yeah, but it's texting. Yeah, it's it's, okay. it's, it's what it is. Yeah. All right. So, there's files, and you have to like convince people to do stuff for you, and you need to be very douchey about it. Like like you can you're hacking things. Uh, you're you're getting people to hack stuff for you. You are interacting with different characters from the show or people you don't even know. Like things don't even. You won't even know who the person is if you don't go down the right path of discovery. Right. Um, there's weird things in, in it as well. It's very oxen free in this way that there's, for some reason, you are involved in a uh, group chat, but not as the person that everyone thinks you are. They think huh. you're this other person, and you're like, why am I in this chat? What's the story here? And so it's this crazy chat about like, Friends who never actually, they haven't seen each other for like 10 years, but they're still best friends. At least they think they are. And you can like manipulate the chat and really fuck them up. Like there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do in this. And I beat it last night and 
the ending was like really satisfying to me but what it does is it resets the game afterwards though so i was like oh i can't wait to like go back and check out all this cool stuff that i did and it like like at the very end it's like boop and just shuts it down and the next time you load the program it starts back over at the very beginning oh shit yeah i don't know if it's what right. like, like i don't know if it's like what they did with oxen free which is like there's new stuff in it now like there's right. more options where you can like now that you've done it once i don't know or maybe it's simply try it again this time don't be a dick or maybe this time pretend hmm. like you know everything because you've seen the series there's probably the quite a lot of that in i'd imagine yeah but it, it was it's it's uh, for what it, it's like two dollar three dollar game for what it is it's very um like i've never been so frustrated with a non-existent person in my life there's a guy in the game <laughs> named henry there's a guy named henry who literally is like communicating with the brick wall he it, it will it will personally frustrate you to have to deal with this non-existent human being right and, oh my god it is there's yeah and then what will happen is we'll be like i'll contact you later and then you won't hear anything for a few hours and then you'll get a, what it does is it messages you like on your phone like yo a message from you click it and then it takes you back to the app it's pretty cool it's pretty ingenious um it's not like anything too crazy but it's definitely i think if you're a fan of the series it's worth the three bucks. I mean, you know, let's say it's 2004. The Mr. Robot game would be an action game where you push crates. Yes. So it is interesting that like, you know, someone can really take a different tact and go, how about do something that's not like not that. lazy yeah. and stupid? Like how about yeah. something that's a little more interesting? That sounds cool. I'll try to, I'll try to check that out. Cause I've watched all, I've only watched like three episodes of Mr. Robot though. So would you, would you say watching the show? That's what I was going to ask because well, I haven't seen the, the show at all. Here's the good part. It's uh, the, the, pro, the app is called uh, Mr. Robot something something 1.5. Uh, 1.51. So it literally takes place in the middle of the first season. Yes. Ah, so okay. If there's no spoils for the end of it. it. Like when you beat the game, it doesn't even spoil the show for you. There's no spoils for season two. That is like six or seven episodes in already. Like there's no spoils for any of it. It's a standalone story between you and and some of the characters involved with the show about things that take place in the first five episodes plus the sixth episode. Right. So it's things that take place there, and it's this confined story, and you just get caught up in it because you find the phone of one of the characters involved with it. And they're like, well, you got my phone now, so you better help me fix this shit. It's on you, dude. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I'm a hacker. I'll fuck up your life. And so you're just like, okay. And so you can, you can even be like, no, screw you. And it will like download shit to the app that makes it look at your phone's going nuts it's hmm, it's nice. really clever it's very very clever um but with that said i downloaded it last wednesday when the show when they like had ad scored on the show and i beat it uh last night so it's not that long of a game and it's also a game that makes you wait time periods too so really if it was all right. compacted it might take you a day or two to beat but because it's time-based and you have to like convince people to do things then they have to actually go do it like they're like i'll get i'll get back to you tonight and then tonight your time they call like they message you interesting that's so cool yeah, what a it's, cool it's, concept it's really neat uh but yeah i think it's three bucks on the app store and on android and i was just like for three dollars that's if you're a fan yeah, it's yeah. super cool i don't know if you're not a fan like if you aren't into it i don't think you get anything from this and i don't know but no i don't think cool. i don't see any reason why if you didn't watch the show you would play this at all yeah and and one of the things you don't I have the context oh yeah because there's a lot of moments where you're asking questions and like someone will say to do something like like we're gonna change the world tonight and you're like okay uh your options are great i guess or like whatever you say and then one's like can you figure out like can you explain to me what you're doing and if you watch the show you know what they're doing yeah. so you're never gonna answer but, uh, okay there's like interesting okay. things that maybe you want to ask that question right so when i played through i played through it as nice as possible and so of course you did. I'm very patient with like this fucking Henry guy. I hated him so much. <laughs> I'm very like, patient with all these people and I'm trying to be nice. I'm like, look, just don't mess with me and I'll be cool. <laughs> I still had the option on the, on, cause you don't have to message everyone. You don't have to even communicate with everyone. And so when I found the, the, the number of the, the son, the option's still there when I beat the game to message him and be like, your dad sleeps with prostitutes. I didn't yeah. even do it. I didn't even touch it. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to win this guy over Jesse Cox style. So there's different ways to go about doing it, which is, it's pretty, it's pretty ingenious. But again, 
it fits in the universe of Mr. Robot. So if you don't know who Mrs. Robot is, you're going to be like, what the fuck is this? No, out? What no, this, is this? this? No, no point. Absolutely. Yeah. It only takes place in the first five episodes. So okay, if you okay. see a little bit, you'll know the characters. You know what's going on. Cool. Is is convincing someone in the Jesse Cox style just telling them to download your character in Oklos and that's just pretty much, pretty much it? Uh, I mean, I'd go download my character. You don't have to download it. You go enter the code. Go Jesse Cox. Go. Yeah, right. yeah that was, that's what I was trying to do. There you go. Good job. We're working together on this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a break so I fix these damn cameras since we cool. have half our show is frozen right now. And of course, Deus Ex probably being the big topic that's going to be coming up after the break. Because I know quite a few of us have played that. In the meantime, however, a word from our sponsor. Well, a word actually. I don't think there are any words in it, but it's a short ad for our sponsor, Crunchyroll.com slash Chalt Biscuit. They bring you today's show, and we get money from them, which is a good arrangement. So if we keep that going, that would be very much appreciated. We'll be right after the break. I'm going to fix this crap and hopefully continue the show. You're watching the Corruptional Podcast. Do not go anywhere. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Corruptional Podcast. Apologies for the lengthier break. Had to fix all that shit that broke during the break, so that was fun. Yay. Are we talking Deus Ex? I think we might be. Oh. You mean, you mean Deus Ex? Do, deuce. No, I don't think it's ever been Deuce. Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Deus Ex, yeah. Deus Ex? Aggressive. No, definitely not that. Deus Ex. Do do sax. Mm. Mankind Mick Foley divided. It, what, yes. Mm. <laughs> Twice. Think about uh, it. Yeah, I go. did think about it for a second. I had to for a second. And then it's like, oh, yes. And not All bad. Right. Mm. Okay. So, Jesse, uh, I believe you played the most out of us. You know, I'm so like far. six hours in. Okay, yeah. You've, you've played more than, than myself. Uh, Matt, have you had a chance to play yet? Uh, I've downloaded it. I haven't had a chance to actually start playing yet. And uh, Dodger Same. is not weeb enough for you, right? Sorry? <laughs> I, no. do, I, I do have a code and I've downloaded it, but I have there not. There you played. go. I was going to say, I'm not sure there's any dating elements in it. So just like. Well, you know, originally, I, I waffled back and forth on it for a while because I was sent a code and I was like, I've never played the other ones. But I'm being told that that I should play not this one. And problem. if I. Yeah, if I like this one, then then maybe go back and play the other ones. But it's not a big deal to just start with this one. Yeah, well, that- the the other ones for sure. But I'd, just just judging where Mankind Divided takes place, I'd like I I think there'd be a lot of events that happened in Human Revolution that are like integral to the plot. But I don't I don't know how they no. handled that. Th- there's really no? one main event that is, and everything else is really at least from what I've seen so far not hugely important unless you're okay, deliberately okay. digging for it you know there are lots of connections to the previous game that are optional well, I, heard, I heard that it starts off with like a pretty lengthy like There's here's a 12 minute here's, recap video you can't you you sex yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll What's tell it, sex? yeah it basically gives you human revolution in 12 minutes if you want to uh so okay, that'll cool. tell you basically what happened the entire game easy uh, yeah, so the, the, it's the, not a big deal the problem with games like this i guess it's not a problem it's kind of cool, but the, the a game like Human Revolution, for example, had multiple ways of playing it, had multiple varieties of story you could get, had multiple enemies you could choose from. So they literally had to pick a vague, a vague way to continue it. Right. This happens without, every time, by the way, with yeah, these without games. Without actually having a lot of those plot points carry over. So there are moments where you can talk about other characters and learn about other characters in the past, but none of it except for the major event of Human Revolution is important to Mankind Divided. Yes. Okay. But yeah, that's okay. pretty much how it is. And that was uh, similar with the... No, actually, remember? No, that I don't recall. There never was a Deus Ex 2, was there? No. No, no. that didn't exist. No, I can't think of any, any sequels that the original Deus Ex had. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right there. Yeah. I, it's surprising. I would have so, thought it would have got one, but I don't know no. Any. Evidently so, not. I, I, uh, Glad to, that after all this time, they've gotten one, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more of a prequel, you know, we don't really have any sequels, yeah. you know. 
Uh, just to interject, it's uh, I have a funny story where um, I was working at a particular uh, uh, publisher and uh, they had the stock room that's filled with old games and they would go, hey, we have a lot of box copies of Invisible War that we really what, what's need Invisible to War? get. Everyone was kind of like squinting, like what? And they're like, mm. we need to get rid of People, Appa- apparently, well, Invisible War is free. so invisible and that you're, like, bra- you're breaking no. up. You can't, but no, <laughs> no we can't hear them. what he's saying. So no. As far as I know, there's just this one closet um, breaking up. Yeah, I mean, you were saying yeah. something about Invisible War, and then you kind of cut off. So yeah, I'm going to assume that that doesn't exist. About. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. But. Uh... Oh man, what's you happening? You are lagging hard. Even the I'm not sure why. Wants this... <laughs> exactly. I was going to say this game really like, does not oh. exist. Oh, Bloody hell! Oh, no. Oh god. my god. Yeah, Matt is lagging the hell out. Matt. That Matt. You shouldn't have mentioned it. No, no, he's still going. He doesn't know. He, he doesn't, doesn't know. know. He doesn't know that the internet shut him down. No, I do know. I do know. I do. Uh, you don't okay, believe cool. it though. You don't believe it. Nope. Yeah. He's, 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 still, he's still there for the time being. I feel right. like he's like behind uh, us. Possible. Or ahead, yes. or ahead of, I don't know. Yeah. Your the internet Illuminati, is lagging very hard right now. Oh, God. It's Mr. Robot. Uh, all right. Well, while Maybe. he's fixing that, in the meantime, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about it. Uh, so you're, you're about six hours in, Jesse, as you mentioned. Uh, initial thoughts? Um, I think that. Uh, at least from my remembrance of it, it plays and feels exactly like Human Revolution. Yes, that, that was my initial thought of it. And to be fair, I haven't played Human Revolution in a couple of years. I'm probably going to have to go back and watch years. my old video to remember how exactly that game played. I, I mean, you can go watch the first five minutes of the game. I literally load up the game, get to the first level, and I'm like, okay, uh, let's B, and B works exactly how I should. I'm like, mm-hmm. let's tab. Tab works exactly like it did before. Q is still choke a dude. Like F is still take cover. Like yeah. everything's exactly as I remember it to be. Everything works the same, and I'm like, I'm back. I know exactly where I'm at in this. Like it, it was control scheme wise, gameplay wise, it feels exactly like Human Revolution. Hello. Yeah. Yep. We'll get you back. Matt. Welcome back. There we go. You back. Yeah, I don't know, Mr. Robot Deus Ex conspiracies. I don't know. I don't know. Just I don't don't mention that which Make shall not games. be named. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. This I just, is what you get. I didn't know that there is like that there was a game that like it shall not be named. Don't mention the I word on this show. You almost did it again, and it almost got you. Don't oh, even. Got don't you. Do just it. don't. Just don't, don't even. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the gameplay. It's the same. You know, Human Revolution style of uh, first person shooter, but you go into third person when you're in cover. You can do lethal or non-lethal. You're literally given lethal or non-lethal option right out the gate. It's yeah. like, hey, you want a, you want a gun that shoots dudes or you want a gun that shoots darts? And it's like, I don't know, gun that shoots darts. You want a short range gun that zaps people or a long range yeah. gun that zaps people? Yeah. You can go for that. Um, so I took the stun gun. Uh, I do love the sneaking and zapping people. Mm-hmm. It seems again, which I'm not hugely keen on. Just like Human Revolution, they reward you extra experience for non lethal takedowns, which makes no sense at all. Makes plenty of sense to me. I mean. It would if the ammo for the stun gun wasn't hugely plentiful. I mean, I, I finished the first level, I think, with 35 spare stun gun ammo. And like, well, if you're going to reward me for that, then at least make it difficult, which it was not. Well, I, I played through it with long range. Stun. The trank rifle, yeah. Yeah, and there was, there was very little of that. So I finished with like three left. Right. And I, and I found ammo in the level. So... That intro for me, uh, especially the last part of the intro, was very difficult when your weapon is long range. Yeah. And so I basically made it extra hard for me for no reason. Huh. Thankfully, I had that, that typhoon ammo, or like the, the ability, which typhoon. saved my ass at the end. Because holy shit, what an unexpected twist for a guy trying to go all like sneaking around. I was like, you fuckers. So- uh we we recently finished an LP of uh, of uh, Human Revolution, and we found that if you just say fuck it and get rid of all your like cowardly stealth stuff and just hoard ammo, the entire game is a cakewalk. You right. can the final boss you can destroy in about four seconds. 
uh, if you if you just go in with like the, as many heavy heavy uh, rifle ammos as possible, as much typhoon as you want, you, you'll destroy anything in the game. Like there's no challenge there. And you can do that. But the thing that I love about this game, and it's a little different from Dishonored, for example. But right. the thing I like about this game is the sneakier you are, the stealthier you are, and the less people you kill, the more benefits you get. Like, the game rewards you for right. not being a murderous asshole. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, uh, there's plenty of examples in Human Revolution, and I know one that I played at E3 that's probably a later part of this game, where the character literally is like, if you kill people, the character calls you out on it and shit goes down. And if you don't kill people, he's like, hey, thanks for that. You know, like, let's talk. And so there's a lot of ways that that helps you. And so mm. I actively try my hardest not to kill people. Um, I also, uh, after that, after the big intro bit, um, the game does what most games do. And it does a reset of all your, like at the beginning, when you, you start with everything, you have all your abilities, the game does a reset. And it's like, got to learn everything over again. And uh, the good thing is there's a mission right off the bat where you have two options. The first option is just go report in. The second option is go find this dude who's going to help you figure out what the hell's going on with your body. And so I was like, well, side quest, fuck yeah, let's go do this. And it's literally a ridiculous very first beginning of the game side quest. It, it's, it throws you out into the world. So you start in Prague after the intro level. You start in Prague, and it's an open. It's pretty much an open world in that. It's a hub. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just you like the first game, you have an objective. Your objective is way over there, and you have X number of ways of getting there. You can get there however the hell you want to get there. Um, in my case, because I was like, let's explore and let's figure out if there's a sneaky way to get there. I uh, walked out my front door. Well, after I did everything in my apartment, walked out the front door, looked around, saw there's a million things to do. Was like okay let's just focus and ended up going off a roof up like a ladder to a sky like rising off like windows into apartments seeking through grates and then ended up like behind where i need to go only to find out that there were bad guys there so if i had gone normally and just walked they would have seen me and shit would have gone down well yes yeah, yeah. the whole so area is like I mean, we're, we're really eventually to spoiler territory here, um, but... That, oh, that yeah, whole... I wasn't going to say any more, but, like, the idea that it, the objective said, go this way, and had you just gone that way, shit would have gone down. Well, I mean, that, that it does warn you of that very clearly in the, in the communication <laughs> you get right that. before that. If you, yeah. if you just go on autopilot and run towards the, the, way, the waypoint, you will run into obstacles. Um, but, yeah, that, that hub area has got a lot of exploration in it. Human Revolution had a similar hub. Once you've done the first mission, yeah. so you can find side quests, you can find uh, people's apartments to raid, passwords to open computers, stuff to hack, loads of events to crawl through. I mean, it, it seems like a place you can spend a lot of time in. I, I mean, I spent ten plus hours in the hub of Human Revolution before I even went I out of it. Yeah, me too. I, I released a video today. It's an hour and forty minutes long, and I only get one mission done. But there's a lot of there's like a thirty five minute. It's a thirty five minute like solid block of decisions and cutscenes and things happening but most of it is the process of me getting to where that is and discovering so much shit along the way that you're just like i have to look at this mm -hmm. i found it i gotta see what this is and then discovering things like in sewers that lead to other places you're like yep where the fuck am i going and all of it is relevant because you, like you'll go and you'll discover a manhole and you're like all right let's go in the sewer and you find spoiler but there's a code that leads it's like hey if you ever come across this locker here's the code for that locker and you're like this is so fucking cool and of course you enter the locker and you get a bunch of free shit and so it's all about exploring it's all about sneaking around it's all about uh pretty much everything you did in human revolution like the formula has not changed much here it yeah a little better but other than that it's the same game from the franchise that you expect it to be yeah because cool. the the developer like they're really uh, like um uh idos montreal uh they're very good at making these these like levels feel very dense with stuff they're not they're not huge they're not ginormous but sometimes it's it's better for that because i would rather 
like go in a small area and find thing after thing after thing that leads to like areas either below or ver like higher rather than a game world that just goes on and on forever and have the thing here. There's a 10 minute walk or ride or whatever all the way there. And there, and for, I mean, for a first person shooter, that makes the most sense. So I'm like, I'm glad that like, you know, I haven't played mankind divide yet, but I'm glad that seems to also be the case. Cause I did watch that walkthrough video of Prague and being like, yes, okay, they're doing the exact same sort of thing where it's just, there's just so much to kind of look at and, and experiment with and, like you said, explore. So that's good. Yeah, to I mean, D Deus Ex has been about that for a long time. You know, the different levels being completely full of stuff out of the way that y you can look at. I mean, I've done seven, eight playthroughs of the original game and I find new stuff every time I do it. It's, it's the, all... The, and it rewards you for doing that. Yeah, it, it, everything that's in this one, for example... Uh, just like Human Revolution, just like the, the first Deus Ex, um, it's all world building. And so everything you're seeing, even though it's, it might at first appear overwhelming, because you're like walking out into a world that is populated with people and things are happening and there's stuff going on. Everything you're seeing builds this universe that, is that, that you're in uh, to such a great degree that a perfect example, a non-spoiler example, is I was walking around the street just exploring, and two guys were talking about how, you know, one guy had hooked up with this religion, and it might seem a little kooky, but, like, it's pretty cool, and he's, he likes the concepts of it, and the other guy's like, do they accept Augs? He's like, that's what it's all about, man. It's all about Augs. And then, while exploring, you find a, a book, and in this pamphlet you read, it talks about all the new religions that have popped up since the incident. And all these things that are taking place. And you're like, oh shit, that's what that guy was talking about. He's talking about that thing. And so it all like flows together. Um, you in one apartment can find a note from a husband to a wife that's like, hey, you know, we should get out of here. This city, like th there's so much potential there. We can go there. We just have to take all our money out of the bank and just pay these guys to traffic us there. And then you find information from the traffickers that like, we're going to fucking rob these assholes blind. And so there's, like, no! <laughs> But it, there's all these cool things that, like, multiple levels of things happening here, and it's all connected. But you don't even have to do any of that. Like, you don't even have no, to. No, you can completely ignore that. I mean, yeah. that, that was the best thing about it, honestly. It's the best thing about that series that it's as, you know, the, the world is as built as you want it to be. The mm -hmm. storyline is as in-depth as you want to spend the time looking for. I mean, there are literally, like, there's an entire book in the original Deus Ex that's broken up into little pieces oh the soap opera out. yeah the, there's all yeah, sorts like of things heart, all over the place hearts of steel yeah i think that was the they, name of it they absolutely have that in this game it's yeah! a huge amount it's of, about of yeah it's about a female detective who gets hired on by an augmentive guy to go find out who killed his sister and it's great it's really really great it's it's i found like three of them so far Fucking hearts of steel rules. <laughs> yeah, newspapers want, everywhere, documents game. everywhere, ebooks everywhere to read. But of course, ignore all of that if you so desire. Um, the thing about it is, you know, I played. I've only played a few hours. I played the first mission. And I've been screwing around in Prague for a while, doing side missions and all that kind of thing. I think if the things that annoyed you about Human Revolution are probably still going to be there. I'll, I'll balance issues in terms of the combat an optimal way of doing things versus a non-optimal way of doing things. The problem with rewarding you with experience for combat is that, generally speaking, it's going to mean that there's going to be one optimal way to do everything, and that optimal way still seems to be non-lethal. It still seems to be a specific fashion. For what I can tell, and I may be wrong on this, you still get experience for hacking, so even if you have the password, you should probably still hack the fucking thing anyway, because uh, there's still bonuses and things to have. There's, I will say it's five, it's a five XP difference. Uh, yeah, but you don't when you hack. There's also the resource caches that you can grab, which will give you credits and stuff. You can. I mean, you you can if you're like gonna hacking in this one. It became assholey. Like there's the the computer's actually much more intelligent this time in tracking your ass down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you can get the caches and things. But if you're just gonna straight hack, uh, a code is twenty five HP. A hack is twenty five. If you get it the first time, a hack is plus five. So, yeah, I don't know. It's there's, yeah. there's... the experience. It's not a it's not a huge deal. I think you know. There's I, I was never really cared too much about that in the original one because the amount of experience you got for hacking anyway wasn't huge. But anyone that's like, I must find the optimal route. I must min max at the expense of everything is going to find that one route to do things. Right. Well, speak, speaking of optimal route, uh, if you 
explore. Like if you, uh, the game, you're right in that the game is easier if you go in guns blazing, but it definitely penalizes you for doing that because if you find like a hatch or a vent or something and you go through it, it's like, there's probably, probably something off to the side. Key. Yeah, like, yeah, you can sort of get that. Yeah, and so... Yeah. The experience into- system in the game was uh, actually inspired by a mod for the original Deus Ex called Shifter, which was meant to rebalance the experience gain for different playstyles, because in that game they also had a similar issue, and experience was even more important in that game, because... I mean, your ability to even shoot a fucking gun was reliant on experience. Right. There, were, there were guns you literally could not even equip if you didn't have the right skill. So gaining the optimal amount of experience was massively important in the original Deus Ex. So Shifter was designed to reward you for doing more stuff like exploration and all that kind of thing. They took that, they put it into Human Revolution, but they forgot that the necessity for experience wasn't as important because you can I- equip any gun you get anyway. I like design the narrative, like the real world reason why JC Denton would just look down at a gun that's on the floor and he's just like, I, I can't. Yeah. I don't I don't know how. It just I have hands. Give me the, but give I, me, I give me the gap gun. It. It's, it's like you're out. untrained, you can't use it. It's like And he just looks down and he's like, That's a shame. I, I believe you could use it, but it would be so fucking useless because right. it took about thirty seconds to get your reticule small enough to hit anything with it if you're untrained. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, there was there was a bunch of stuff with that game because really Deus Ex was more of an RPG mm-hmm. and the the games since then have not been they have RPG elements in them but they're primarily first person shooters with mm-hmm. RPG elements attached to them you know uh, one thing I have, uh, that's uh, compromises sorry. right uh, one thing I have to give a shout out is that the uh, voice actor for uh, for Adam Jensen uh, Elias Tufexis uh i i met him uh like once or twice and That's he's like one, yeah he's he's a super super nice guy and he came to where i worked and he was doing a little promo saying here at the idos montreal offices they're working tirelessly and, and he's so he's doing that title type of little promo mm-hmm. and they're near my desk and i had like this giant like four foot statue of like the predator from like predator and and it's it's laying there, and uh, he's kind of in front of my desk, and I'm like, ooh man, the sky, ooh, I'm getting the vapors just being near him, and um, the promo girl says, uh, sorry, we need to move that out of the out of the way. That's like a thing, like a copyrighted thing. So she she goes to grab my predator thing, and I go, yeah, no, do whatever. I, I don't. And then he puts his hand on and goes, no, that's, <laughs> that's the predator. You don't mess with that. He understands. And she goes, she goes, oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so then they just move the camera slightly upwards. It just, he's like, okay, good. Are you okay? And I'm looking up at him with stars in my eyes going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. That guy is a super, super awesome dude. And he like, you see voice actors Sounds all like the time. Sounds like a sweetie poop. He, d- he is, he is. Uh, you see voice actors sometimes that don't care about the roles at all, especially in games. And then you'll see certain people like, you know, I follow him on Twitter or whatever, and he's always repping the game. Like even even when it wasn't coming out, like even before Mankind Divide was uh, was even announced, he'd always be answering people's questions about Deus Ex and and whatever. And he, he's a super cool guy. And I, I assume his performance and is is just as as good and gravelly as as the first game. Probably yeah. yes, I believe yeah. it is. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, my assessment of it, up to this point anyway, is like, it's more of what Deus Ex Human Revolution was. You know, they've they've tidied and they've sanded off the edges and it seems like the augmentation system is a little bit more in-depth. They have uh, a system where you can activate experimental orgs, but you have to deactivate other orgs to do it. So there's kind of a power management system because otherwise you'll literally overheat and melt, which I found <laughs> quite amusing. Uh, and So that, that was kind of cool. They have a new mode in it called Breach, which I played a bit of, which is Great. a set of single-player challenges where you have a avatar that levels up separately to your main character and can get really crazy versions of the orgs in the main game. So, like, the first org you get is, like, a double jump. You can go up to, like, a quad jump or whatever. And the whole Jeez. thing has a different art style, which is really cool. It actually looks a lot like volume. You remember that... Uh, Stealth game by uh, yeah. God, he's going to kill me because I can't remember his name. Mike, uh, dude Mike, behind Mike Stanley Biffle. Parable, yeah. right? Not Stanley uh, Parable. Thomas was alone. Mike Biffle. Thomas Mike was Biffle. alone, right? Close enough. Uh, but it looks like that. It's a lot of like um, flat shaded polygons with a great, uh, interesting sheen on it. So I was very intrigued. 
uh, when it, it came to that. And basically, it's a bunch of short levels where you're going to sneak through, steal as much data as possible, and then get out of the level. And then you unlock booster packs for your avatar, which is kind of like random loot and levels up and upgrades and stuff. The mode seems pretty fun. Apparently, it's got microtransactions built into it. I didn't see those because they weren't in the preview version. Um, I mean, I don't know how much they will affect the pacing of it, if at all. But it seemed like a pretty cool mode nonetheless. It seemed like it was something a little bit different to do. It's like, here's some more Deus Ex gameplay outside of the context of the Deus Ex gameplay, which is purely just, hey, do you enjoy the gameplay of this game? Well, here's a bunch more of it, and you get to level up an avatar. Reminds me a lot of uh, Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, which is very much like that. There's also an app that if you play the, the mobile version, you get Praxis kits for in-game, I guess. And yeah, I found something called the triangle key in the first level that so apparently you have to yeah. scan with your phone that will give you something. Mm. I was so, just like, eh, F it. If you want to scan it, go ahead. I just left on the screen. I was like, have fun. I ain't going to do it. Yeah, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how that works actually for streaming if everyone could just scan that and just pause well, the YouTube video. Because it, it saves, because I clicked it and it saves onto a grid of like, you found all the collectibles. Yeah. So I imagine it's one of those things that gives it you It might be tied into your account. One. It's probably yeah. tied into your account. Yeah. It's nice that that game is getting good reviews and everything like that because I was really worried when they unveiled that horrible fucking uh, pre-order campaign where you could oh, get the yeah, game released. Oh yeah, I'm kind of glad we early. killed that from Orbit. That's, oh, uh, that was horrible. But, I mean, it, the pre-order bonuses are uh, pointless. Like it, they re- get the game to release four days early. No, just release it four just days early. At the then, same you- time. <laughs> A lot, yeah, there was a lot of bullshit in that. Like, uh, I'm glad that that campaign got a really bad response from people, and I'm glad it did because hopefully it will stop other companies from trying that shit again. Exactly. Anytime yeah. soon. So I'm happy that that shit got killed off. Uh, the pre-order bonuses for the game are pointless. I, I hate pre-order bonuses that make the game easier. It's like, why would you want that? That's you're paying to cheat. That's stupid. <laughs> to be fair, the game has paid to cheat in it. it as I say, the microtransactions give you boosters and shit. There's I, a certain nobility to cheating, though. There is, there, there is, but not when you <laughs> pay to do so. I think, I you think went, yeah. <laughs> it's like when you discovered a code to do it, you felt like, you know, you'd done something, you'd worked to be able to cheat. When right. you pay for it with your credit card, that just feels cheap. That's but the greatest heroes of all are the ones that pay to cheat. Indeed. You know, it, I, I don't <laughs> know about those microtransactions. I'm not, I'm not happy that they're there. They shouldn't be in a single player game. I've said it before with like yeah. uh, shit like Dead Space 3. They shouldn't be there. There's always the temptation of the dev to fuck with the in-game economy because of that, to encourage people to use those. Whether or not there's any evidence that that'll happen, I mean, it's mostly hypothetical because Dead Space 3, didn't, you didn't have a resource gathering problem because of the microtransactions. Anyone that played that game you probably knew you were going to get a lot of resources anyway. You didn't have to worry too much about that. I don't know whether or not there's been an example of a single-player game where that's not been the case, but all I'm saying is that it's money-grubbing, charging people to cheat. I mean, I know G- I think GTA V is actually probably the biggest example of a game that has done a lot of that kind of bullshit, made stuff in GTA Online deliberately expensive so that you're tempted to buy their microtransactions, to buy their shark cards or whatever. Right, right. Uh, I heard that there was a lot of that going on, but I don't play GTA Online, so I couldn't really give you that um, assessment. But it's insidious. I don't like it. It doesn't ruin the game, for what I can tell, but its presence is not welcome. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, the game seems it seems good. You know, it seems like more of Human Revolution, which I think is what people wanted in the first place. So, and it's nice that Breach is like its own kind of thing, and not like Seraph yeah. and 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 Jensen running around shooting each other in like a multiplayer map. Like it, yeah, it's not it's a multiplayer game. A it's just a bunch thing. of well designed yeah. little mini levels that are that, you know, and the avatar progression with the loot drops and rarities and shit. It's like this has nothing to do with Deus Ex really, but I can. I'll take the uh, the concept because the whole idea is like, oh, it's a, it's in a hacker underworld and you're infiltrating this uh, actual location within the game, the Blades, mm-hmm. which is like a real place within the game. Uh, so you have a hacker avatar and he has powers and shit and the defenses are just, uh, you know, the people you're shooting are actually uh, representations of the computer trying to fight back and stuff like that. And I just love what they did with the art style. You know, it invokes mm-hmm. the aesthetic of Deus Ex without looking like Deus Ex. And it, it's a really cool sort of cyberpunk feel to it. And the uh, the Deus Ex Go uh, uh, mobile game is like uh, I was uh, my friend Liam was telling me the other day. Like you download it, and, and it has the same aesthetic as Breach. Yes, where yes it's it does. Like, yeah, yeah. 
and, and a lot of yeah, triangles, a lot of shiny polygons, geometric yeah. shapes. Yeah, we Kids do love, love our geometric, geometric shapes. shapes. Always love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, piss filter's gone, by the way. For those that did not like piss filter, I've in... been seeing people complaining about it in chat. Yeah, some people actually are not happy the piss filter's gone. There's actually not a lot of orange, not a lot of golden bronzy orange. Oh, uh, that first level's pretty, <laughs> pretty orange. Well, that's because there's a lot of sand, yeah. you know. But the, the game has a, a, let's just say, a more varied color palette. I'm not sure if I like that. I like Piss Filter. I liked uh, golden, orangey, bronze, everything. I think that was great. Yeah, that was, it was a great This aesthetic. golden, bronze, orangey, everything herself, Eva. Sorry. I w <laughs> Sorry, Matt. You're the only one here who's going to get this. The other two yeah, guests no, are like, what no, the fuck I, are you I, talking about? I, I, I appreciate uh, Eddie. Just Eddie, Eddie yeah, sneak a few wrestling references in where we can, you know? Please please do. Please do. Uh, I guess Finn Baylor would have lots of time to play this game now. I'm sorry, Baylor. Baylor? What the fuck, Baylor, mate? Balor. Sorry. Canadian sorry. bastard. I, I've never seen anyway, we're going off tangent, but I, I, I was <laughs> We're just gonna do an hour of WWE right now. It's gonna happen. I would love to. Anyway, um I was gonna say that uh the uh the uh creative director or the are uh, the art director for uh, Mankind Divided would walk by your desk every now and then when you're uh, working on Deus Ex and he would literally wear black and gold almost every day. Of course, black and, and gold, orange. And all he the was time. the one that was always like, Yeah, no, it's a brand new bold aesthetic for video games and it's I, like, it's good. It, it, I like it. it I is. liked it. I bought it the is. fucking coat. I bought the the Adam <laughs> Jensen coat that has that on the inside. It has air vents on it. You fucking mark. <laughs> I, I really am. I'm just scummy mark. It's still real to me, damn it. Damn it. There you go, there you go. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I say it looks really solid from what I can tell. Uh, some people are having performance issues on launch. Um, interestingly enough, an issue that I found in the pre-release version has cropped up in the real one. Um, I'm hoping that my uh, QA information that I gave them two days ago will be helpful to them. Uh, some people are having um, objects not spawn in the world and mm. geometry missing. So like floating objects and uh, walls disappearing. I had ah. the problem and I I fixed it by basically making a new save game. Cuz it happened to me in the first 20 minutes. So like I made a new save game, that's what fixed it for me. Hopefully that'll fix it for other people as well. I did report that to them. Evidently that's still an issue. So if you see that if you see that in the first level, you see coffee cups floating midair and shit. Make a new save file immediately. Don't waste any more time. Make a new save file. That's not supposed to be that way. Um, outside of that, I mean, it ran fine for me. It didn't run perfectly, but then again, I wasn't able to run the new drivers. They literally crashed my computer constantly for some reason. So, but my current computer is under ancient voodoo curse, so I don't trust. <laughs> I don't trust it with any performance-related okay. stuff at all. Uh, so bear that in mind. But most people seem to be running it fine. There are a few people who are having problems and are causing a big stink, which is fine. You know, they if there are issues, they need to fix them. But most people seem to be, you know, it's, it's a good port, from what I can tell. It's a good PC version. Cool. There's also some things that I'm not, like, I have a question for you, TB. What you got? Um, when you wake up in your apartment in this game, mm -hmm. yes. you go outside and you get an answering machine. There's yes. an answering machine message. Was that a cutscene for you or was that just dialogue? Uh, it was just dialogue. It was just dialogue for me too. I watched someone else play. It was a cutscene for them. Huh? That's interesting. And I'm like, Weird. I missed all of it because I accidentally walked out the door of the apartment. It didn't warn me that I was about to leave my apartment. So it's like you have a message from important person in the plot. I'm like, okay, well, while I'm listening to this, I guess I'll just explore my apartment. And I was like, oh, I just walked out the front door and the message cut off. Like, fuck. No, oops. I, yeah, no. I, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, mine, I, I, I walk out, like, I, I got a cutscene of Jensen taking a shower, like, I took a shower, nice. I got a I, Yeah, I went to, I got the shower okay. cutscene, you know, some nice I augmented reality there, hey. And I went, and I went outside, and, uh, got the message, and it was just, like, voice, it was VO. I watched another person play, straight up cutscene, cutscene. Him, like, staring huh. out the window, looking at the world. <laughs> That's interesting, yeah, I, I, I never got that. that. Yeah, I, wonder, so, I wonder if there's actually a reason for that. That would uh, be yeah, intriguing. Interesting. Huh. So I'm really curious how that translates to the rest of the game. Because mm. that was that's the beginning of the game. There's already, yeah. if you did something this way, you don't get this. Or, I so, wonder, because you always yeah. have to wonder in Deus Ex. If, I, I, I'll say this, I've said this a thousand times, and some people will hate me for saying it, but I've got to keep saying it because it's right, that Liberty yes. Island is the best level that's ever been designed in a video game. That's the first level of the original Deus Ex. Because you can play that level a thousand different ways, and there are all, there's always new shit to find. 
It's huge. And a lot of people were put off by that. Like, I don't know what to do. It's like, no, what they gave you is a literal playground. They gave you an entire level. The objective is here. You're here. You figure out how to deal with this shit. Because you're supposed to be an agent, you know? And you can explore the whole level. And there's shit hidden everywhere. There's subplots, the side missions, there's new characters. You And you eventually even discover... I mean, this game's like 20 years old. I'm not going to spoil it right now. You, know, you discover that you're literally on the island with your fucking base right there. And you had no idea when you first mm -hmm. landed on the island. It's like, I'm on this island. And then it's like, wait a minute, is this my base? And then you just walk in. It's like, hey! It's like, oh, I'm actually on the island with my colleagues and my base is here. So like, yeah, base is on lockdown. Uh, Want to buy some Trank darts? I'm like, yeah, actually I would. Actually, that would be quite useful. Uh, it's the best level. You know, there's so many different ways to explore it and beat it. And none of the, none of the games since then have managed to reach that. Like, I, I love Human Revolution and I'm enjoying Mankind Divided so far. They're nowhere near as complicated as that. Like, they, no. they don't give you that level of freedom. The hub areas are really cool, but they designed those hubs to be deliberately busy and full of shit to find. Whereas Liberty Island didn't feel that way. Liberty Island just felt like this area is naturally big, and there are certain landmarks that you will find, and there are certain logical ways into your objective. It didn't feel like they put something every five seconds to interest you deliberately. You know, They didn't put something in your path. Whereas Human Revolution's design and Mankind Divided's design always feels busy consistently yes. busy because it feels like the players maybe have that expectation that they're always going to find shit which actually to me makes it a little less interesting you know as i said i spent like 10 hours exploring the hub in human revolution i was like by the end of it i'm like you know what i used to love this in deus ex but i'm getting a bit tired of it because it's obvious that they in every nook and cranny they deliberately hid something because like it's deus ex i've got you got to do that it's like no you got to space that shit out man mm. you know when you that's what makes it special when you find the hidden stuff in the underground in this level in the original deus ex because yeah, they're... it's not everywhere you know it's not every five seconds you find hidden shit you know yeah there, there's a certain there's a certain balance you, yes. like you know for for it to be really really optimal but like i think you know i think that's more of like you know maybe they wanted to do it that way that you're describing but like you know, more you want you will you gotta get the kids though. You yeah, gotta get the console kids. gamers and level size yeah. probably has a lot to do with that as well. You know, it's all here's the thing. I'm just happy that for the most part the Deus Ex experience has stayed intact right, to this right, year. Right. You know? It's yeah. not the original Deus Ex, nothing ever will be ever again. You know, the closest you're gonna get is that remake of System Shock 2 they're making. Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. That that game is more like Deus Ex than any other game that exists you'll see a lot of similarities. But m the the spirit of it is in Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. And I'll take that. That's good enough for me. Okay, cool. And it's still, it's a good game in its own right. It stands on its own two feet, and I'm happy with that. Hmm. I still don't know why I need battery charge to punch somebody in the face. That's Well, I mean, that that's like the, the answering the questions about life in general. Like, especially in, um, in the director's cut, they cut that down where you could do it with even like less uh like uh using the stealth attacks would take even less battery away from you it was, yeah. just, it was some um, tiny change but it made like huge ramifications throughout the entire game yeah there's um i i don't know i can't remember how it was in human revolution but there's a minimum uh that your battery can get to that recharges mm. so you're always you know if you've waited long enough you can always do a takedown or you can always use an org uh, but right. the rest of it, you've got to charge back up with batteries and food and shit. Yeah, yeah which is a nice compromise. That's uh, scarfing down energy bars. Oh and... no! Oh god! Yeah, I, I, I wonder. You know, if it, if the original <laughs> J.C. Denton was around today, that would be a goddamn cartoon where he's just <laughs> eating twenty candy bars to get his health back. Candy bar five HP. Candy bar five HP. It's like, oh shit, my fucking arm's fallen off. Uh, how do we regenerate it? Fifty cans of soda. Begin now. One, two, three, four, and you gradually see your arm regenerate. It's like it's working. It's working. <laughs> Christian, stop! It's that game is the best and will never be beaten. I'm sorry. I, I wish <laughs> I, I wish augment shoes would be like a pre-order bonus where I can <laughs> actually get that box of cereal sent to me. Because because uh, uh, Adam Jensen just being really depressed and oh fuck my life, and then just he's just eating, eating cereal with no milk like, for <laughs> children is just amazing. What a I, I I will say. There's a level of genius. Whoever the designer is, I want to meet this person. The game 
has real world foods in it. The exact same logos, different names. So mm -hmm. you know exactly what it is, but the names are like Admiral Pirate. And you're like, <laughs> ah, it's so stupid. I love and that in games. You go into a convenience store and you see like, that's the chips that I eat, but it's named like Umlaut Chips. And you're like, what the fuck is it? What is this? It's so silly. Well, you're in Prague. When in Prague, eat some Umlaut Prague, Chips, eat obviously. Umlaut chips. Whoever the designer is for that, um, nailed it. It's oh, so love it. perfect. And can you still drink uh, 10 40 ounces without dying in five uh, seconds? You, I'm pretty you, sure you can. You absolutely. I don't know if you did this, TV, but in the first level, there's so much beer to there's find. There's so much alcohol. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I walked. I, the, when you wake up the next day, I had all these beers. I was like, fuck it. Let's drink. So I just started downing them. Yeah. And the whole screen goes blurry. And I had so much alcohol that even later, I'm having to drop it behind me because I'm like, I, I just looted so much beer in that first level. <laughs> I just, like, yeah, because the whole place is full of alcohol and different varieties of it. And you just fill your inventory full of fucking beer and wine and shit. I don't know, why. I, don't know like, why I did. Can you it's just give it to people? In the first game, you could, um, actually. The, the first game had a lot of stuff like that where there'd be an NPC where it's like, uh, a homeless guy's like, I'm hungry. And it would be like, you have a candy bar. Or, yeah, it's a chip. Because <laughs> that's how JC Denton talks, of course. And then he'd give you a piece of information in exchange for that. Or in the bar, there was uh, one where I think you had to get this guy drunk and just keep giving him alcohol. And th But he'd, he'd only like certain kinds. You tried to give him like shitty beer and he'd be like no 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 i'm not having that you had to give him some wine and stuff and that'll get him talking i hope right. there's some of that and it's it, it's just little things like that that make that game timeless they, they had that not great npc in in human revolution remember the the black lady that's rooting through a dumpster oh, and yeah letitia uh i hope there's not an npc that's Maybe dialogue is not that uh, over. Deus Ex is legendary for having. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes I'm uh, mostly unintentional racism in it. Like, if you go to. Just look, just go to Hong Kong in the original Deus Ex. It is literally yeah. the same yeah. three voice actors putting on Chinese accents, like yeah. really awful Chinglish, and it's, it's just absolutely all terrible. One of my favorite game characters, Hashtag Chan, is just a dude with a hat that says Hashtag Chan on it. And the guy's like, <laughs> yeah, that guy. what do you want, Chan? Like, the voice is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I spill my drink. There's this Russian sailors dancing on the things oh. in the Hong Kong bar. They also, uh, all the kids look the same in that game, and they reskin the Chinese kids to just be slightly, like, different in skin tone, but speaks like... In it, like a five-year-old would if he was pretending to be Chinese. Like, this right. is this is extremely racist. <laughs> this is so burnt, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, 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 Deus Ex's budget was actually, like, so low that they got no professional voice actors for that game at all. A lot of... I think J.C. Denton's uh, voice actor is just a dev. Like, it, a lot of the really? voices were done by devs. Yeah, they were. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I try to look him up. It's like, who's J.C. Denton's voice actor? Does he have credits anywhere else? Like, nope, he wasn't a professional voice actor. He was just a dude. Huh. Uh, so yeah, just a man. Yeah. So just a man. But you know, it, it's it's not it's not. Oh God, this is the worst thing ever. It's like this is comically silly, like you know, mildly racist. Who really cares? Sort of stuff. That's uh, yeah. As I said, the game's good. Uh, so far, anyway, as far as I can tell. Nope. That's good. Uh, cool. Anything else? You guys, that you guys literally did it. You did we the did, hour. Like, the whole hour, yeah. You did the full hour of Day Sex. I'm so proud. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, that it's is like the most relevant I game. For days. I'm ready. This week. I'm... I'd be talking a bunch about Project High Rise if I didn't just get code for it. It's like, <gasps> it's a Sim Tower clone. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for that game. <laughs> Fucking Sim Tower, the best building game ever made. Here's... You know what? I, I just. Oh, sorry. No. I, I no. I was going to say, like, Okay. You know, I'm just going to let you guys fight it out. <laughs> Yo, <stop. laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious what it's going to be like, because I want to play it as well. But I've played a bunch of, of tower building games recently, and none of them had like captured the fun. It felt very like clinical work. Like I was bored very, very quickly. I'm curious what this will be. Because the sure. Sim Tower experience was like... It was silly. Like, it wasn't like, we're building a high-rise. Like, there was something about it that was more fun than... Well, it, it had the good old Sim City silliness involved, didn't yeah. it? You know, and the fact that all of the people in your tower would have a thought about what was going on, and it would all be 
fucking stupid like i want to see more movies with llamas in them why doesn't right. your movie theater have more llama movies <laughs> you know i mean really sim, sim tower was actually just elevator management simulator 20 well 1996 Absolutely. i think that really was all it was about you had to manage your elevators so that you didn't have horrible congestion in your tower and too much noise to drive residents away that's all that game was uh but i don't know I, I, capturing that keeping the sense of humor and also still make it compelling yeah tricky you know it i don't know that Ute Tower, which was a, a, a mild upgrade to Sim Tower, was the last real Sim Tower game. The stuff that's on iPad and stuff is all garbage, click, you know, cow clicker shit that requires no skill. I don't know. Uh, all I know is um, NerdCube has been saying a bunch of good shit about Project High Rise, so <laughs> I just got my code for it. I'm looking forward to trying it. And we it's know actually he's garbage, a- so it's probably a bad game. Mm. Oh, oh, shit, Oh, laying it down. Oh shit! Three times. Come for me, Dan. <laughs> I mean, it's true. You know, he he only watches the main product. He doesn't watch NXT, Matt. You know, he's he's a garbage human being. It's no okay, but mm-hmm. uh, there's actually a bunch of stuff coming out that looks interesting. That uh, Duelist just got its full release. Uh, Master of Orion, the full release is coming out oh, soon. I'm so excited for that. I haven't played that since the first iteration of the early access game. Oh my god, I played it literally yesterday. Uh, it's is it got better? Different. Yeah, They've, all the races are in. They changed everything. So a great example of a change is when you used to play as humans before, you can literally just settle planets and all of a sudden you're just like have a bunch of people there. Now, if you're settling planets as a human, you have to start bringing people there yes. because you, you can't like, they made it much more difficult per race. So everything's a little bit different. Um, I think it's pretty cool. It's a lot more fun than is it was the before. the combat slowed down a bit because it was way too fucking fast. Like I'll, I'll be completely totally 12,000% honest with you, I still, to this day, don't really do the combat. Like, I just auto-roll that. Sh- I overwhelm them and auto-roll it. I'm ah, like, that's that's not fun to me. I like designing my own ship and then watching it murder fucking everything. Well, the, <laughs> the ship design is a lot better. You can do a lot more in there. You can add a lot more to it. So I'm definitely interested to see, like, because it's still in its, like, beta version. So I'm definitely see what, like... It's out version. in the next three days, the full release. So... yeah. yeah. I imagine what you just played is probably what we're getting. Maybe with one final polish patch. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I played the first early access version and it got a lot of of hate from old school fans. But I'm like, honestly, this is kind of what I was looking for. Like, you know, I played Master of Ryan 2. I played a shitload of it. Did I just want an HG remake of that? No, I didn't. People complained about the combat. It's like, I'm sorry, do you remember the combat in Master of Ryan fucking 2? Once you got past the first 200 turns, the combat was awful. Because you had to basically auto roll it, otherwise it would take forever. You had to individually move each ship in turn based action. It was fucking terrible. There was a bunch of micromanagement that was utterly unnecessary. Uh, so, you know, the fact that they went real time to combat to me was like, yes, that's exactly what you need to do. Uh, but the problem is that the version I played, the combat was too fast. So it's like, oh, we could do maneuver. It's like, oh, it doesn't matter because your fleet's dead in five seconds. It's irrelevant. Jeez. But uh, hopefully they fix that. Um, so, yeah, yeah uh, looking forward to trying that. Yeah. You know what? Uh, oops, sorry. I was going to yes. say, you know what game came out that we talked about before, and I don't think any of us realized it came out, is Bound, that dance game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have heard I did mixed not things realize about that. that it came out. Bound, yeah. yes. Uh, so there was a trailer. Where you're like a ballet dancer. Yeah, there was a really cool trailer that looks incredible. Uh, wait, it, was a, it was a platformer, 3D PS4. platformer. Yes. Yeah, PS4. Mm-hmm. But you were, you were a dancer, and the visual is just amazing. Unfortunately... That game has been met with very mixed reviews. Like, That's people what, were hoping yeah. it would be the next journey or whatever. It's apparently just a pain in the ass to control. It's all flash and no substance. And I was like, oh, that oh, that sucks. I know. Yeah, I didn't realize that it had come out until yesterday or there the day before. There was no marketing push behind that game at all. No, no, no. Yeah, no. so I started reading reviews and I was like, man nobody can really decide like if, like definitively if this game is good or not. It's been interesting. Uh, also, Jim, something, Jim definitely didn't like it. I'll tell you that it, for a fact. It's something ridiculous. Like it's $27 and it's like a oh, two hours. Three, it's it's yeah. an, I think, um, I think another three hour game or whatever. And yeah. I saw the trailer for it and I saw, well, look, well, that's, that's animation porn. I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. download that. I downloaded it and yeah, I played it for about like, you know, I just had 10 minutes to sit down and play it. I was like, this seems cool. This seems cool. That's fine. But like, then when I read more reviews, it's like that 10 minutes is the entire game. Yeah. 
uh, just yeah. over and over and over. And just yeah. look how awesome the animation is. The music, feel emotions, please feel them. Please. Yeah, sure, it looks like, uh, according to Jim Sterling, anyway, it's like, oh well, it it really wanted, to, it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be just a sort of narrative journey like experience or it wanted to have puzzle platformer and it's like it tried to be both and failed at both because apparently it controls like a block of steel on a ski and it, the camera it, it is, is a awful stiff. yeah which is not what you want because that's a game that looks incredibly yeah. fluid so if your control yeah. experience is not that you create this inherent dissonance between the player and what's going on the screen which will completely take you out of the experience apparently uh, he described the navigation as lethargic and all sorts of things like that. It's like, oh, that doesn't... Yeah, mm. that's not what you want. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, I want fluidity. I want to feel like I'm, I'm dancing through the stars or whatever, and apparently it just feels like you're stumbling through the game. So I think, like, well, that that's sucks. Yeah, just watching the trailer visually, it's gorgeous looking. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It, but I think I can definitely see all the comments that are like, it's all flash, no substance. Because right. even the trailer, it looks beautiful. Yeah. But other than that, it's just prancing around and it doesn't like like when you saw the journey trailer you're like there's an objective like there's we're going to that light thing there's something about this game this is just like many of the scenes are the same room where she's just dancing cut to another angle of her dancing mm -hmm. and it's like it's beautiful yeah. i don't know that it's a game that, it's so a screensaver is what it is mm. i well, definitely you know like apparently it is totally now, like a game it. the problem is when it tries to be a game it fails because ah. it's got platforming and puzzle platforming and it's shit that's the problem, apparently. Yeah. So you know, it's almost ironic, I suppose. It's like, well, this doesn't really look like a game. It's like, yeah, but that's the best bits of it <laughs> when it doesn't try to be a game. The rest mm. of it, uh, that's when it starts to fall apart. That, that's a shame. Shame. Uh, shame. 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 There was shame. something else. Shame. shame. I, I tried a little bit of Savage Resurrection, uh, which was pretty neat. Uh, Savage was a game I played a long time ago. I... It's if you played Natural Selection, which you have because you played mm -hmm. in the Polaris brand deals and such. Um, <laughs> Savage came out before that, um, and there was a second version of it which changed a lot that people didn't necessarily like. So what they did is they just took the original game and remade it in the Unreal Four engine, okay, and re-released it, and it's pretty good. Why not tell? It's feels better the same. than Natural Selection. Would you say? Uh, I, it's it's tricky. Like it doesn't have the. I think that that alien marine interaction is so fundamentally cool and different that I think that's a bit more compelling because in this you've got humans and beasts and one has technology, the other has magic, but they still have relatively similar abilities, you know? Okay. The, thematically, they're a bit different, but they have relatively similar abilities. The, the asymmetry isn't as strong. I think the base building's a lot better and it's also open levels instead of being a lot of corridors and vents and shit, you know, big open sweeping planes, beautiful terrain, and you know, but gameplay is quite similar where you have a commander and you have your your teams and stuff like that um so far it's fine it seems like they're implementing some sort of cosmetic loot drop system and that's going to be their their business model going forward uh it plays from what i remember anyways i mean savage is more than 10 years old it it plays pretty similar to the original and it's got a pretty strong player base right now the question is whether or not it can keep it because mm. yeah that that's going to be the real issue that Games like that, games like Nuclear Dawn, games like Natural Selection, if you don't have a bunch of like experienced people playing Commander, they generally fall to pieces. The game, the smart thing they did do is they made an AI Commander, and there's now a queue where the AI plays the Commander. It's called like casual mode. The AI plays the Commander, and everyone else just plays foot troops. So oh, cool. that's pretty good, because if you've ever tried to queue in Natural Selection and had a bad Commander, they can literally fuck the whole game up for you. Right. So putting an AI commander in that's competent and can lead you and having the other guys under the same conditions is a smart business move, I think. Yeah, like if you've ever had a commander who just never played the game until the day of the tournament. Yeah, I can't imagine how that, that would work, really. I imagine it would work really poorly, actually. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that didn't happen. Mm -hmm, me too. Yeah. Yep. That, I, I imagine people would be really angry if, if that were to occur. <laughs> Frustrated, maybe a little bit. A little, a little frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Obviously, just just speculating yeah. hypothetically I mean, if that were to happen. Yeah, if, no, if you're not gonna have a commander, you don't want just some Joe schmo to come <laughs> along and uh, and just waste your time. You need someone competent. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, it's a good job that never happened, right? 
We'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the news and upcoming stuff. You're watching the Co-Optional Podcast. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional <laughs> Podcast. Hi. Hey. Hello. Welcome. 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 Dodger, I see you've uh, taken an interest in good chairs by the looks of it there. Oh, I have. Indeed. Mm, oh. Yes, quite. If I take... Mm-hmm. I don't actually use the x-ray, so I only use the head cushion. Because, oh, look. <laughs> how similar. Oh, how did this happen? Weird. Ah. So, yeah. No, I, I jacked in the x-ray because the ship uh, for the uh, Rain or Ergo human, which you have now picked up as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's so funny, though. I've had so many people be like, I'm a, I'm looking for a new chair. Can you link me? And I'm like, sure. Just and don't then like, when you see the price. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah that's them. the first thing that happened to you. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, you, you probably got it cheaper than like the recommended retail price is like $900. And Jesus. I think was, right now they're selling for about 600 pretty cheap when we bought them. Yeah, yeah. it's about, you can get, they've been around for a while. They're about 600 now. You think, oh, well, God, that's so expensive. It's like, yeah, here's the thing. We sit in these to work every day. Like 12 hours a day at least. <laughs> What's cheaper? It's Spinal you know, surgery later in life <laughs> or this chair now? But for anyone that works on the internet, you're basically buying a car, your chair. <laughs> like, you know, it, like it might as well be, you know, a pair of work boots or yeah, like a car or a vehicle or something. A really good pair of work boots costs $600 as well. Yeah, uh, no, on the plus side, it means you won't put a you won't yeah. put a fucking no nail there. through your foot when you accidentally no. miss with the pneumatic nail gun. You know, it's, it's like oh, suddenly that's why this is so valuable. Weird that. Um, and I, <laughs> I like everybody kept being like, oh, you should contact DX Racer. But when I've sat in DX Racer chairs, that's shit. I'm sorry, that's shit. Good to me. Um, I had one. And- I bought one with my own money. No sponsorship. I'm not sponsored by these fuckers either. The point of the matter is that I sat in the thing. It doesn't provide good support. It's branded towards gamers. because like, oh, it's a gaming chair. It's not. The components were shit. I mean, my armrests came apart after six months. They just flaked off. And it was shitty polyfoam <laughs> inside. Off. Yeah. I like that visual. They just like, they just <laughs> disintegrated upon it. You know. um, bits were falling off it. It was shitty quality plastic. Really, it, it, What you notice in a proper chair, a real office chair that's designed for support, is like you sit in it initially and think, this isn't very comfortable. Absolutely. Then after about a day, you're like, oh, this is supporting everything. Like, every yeah. important part of the back. It's pushing in here. You know, it's keeping your posture correct. And at the end of the day, you feel so much fucking better as a result. Whereas, I, uh, what? A, a fantastic example is my office chair is also an insanely expensive office chair. And it's one of those ones that it, it's like, you're back. You are super posture. Yes. So mm-hmm. I'm like leaning forward to get like, I'm talking shit. I'm usually just like this, just like yeah. talking to you. And when I go home, the chair I have at home is a, just a shitty like $60 chair that I got that when I sit in it, if I play a game at home, if I'm like on my uh, computer at home, that is literally an hour in. I'm like, oh, oh. my back. Because yeah. you're not used to the way those chairs are anymore. There is a massive difference. Don't let anyone tell you uh, there's a, you know, a, a, like 60 Hundred dollar chair is gonna be anything equal to a no. much more expensive chair. They will not. Like you're yeah. you're paying for a quality there, Just especially when you people like us. You're we're, spend that much money. Yeah. we're old. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our bodies are falling apart. You know, <laughs> we've we've de- we're dealing with decades of bad posture. You know, if you're a young person, you can sit on fucking anything. At our Absolutely. age, no, you can't. Absolutely not. No way. You can way. sit on rocks, like, when you're young. But, yeah. like, once you reach that that one age, your body's like, you know what? I'm good for the rock sitting now. Like, let, let me get a proper chair. Yeah. <laughs> I remember sleeping on floors at university, you know, after a hard yeah. night. You know, Dude. just some random dude's floors. Like, this is fine. Yeah. Now I'm like... I can't even sit on the floor, let alone <laughs> lie on it. Like, Jesus. Yeah. It's like, oh, me bones, me joints are all coming apart. <laughs> oh, I'm an old me man. Me balls. Me balls. Me balls. Me balls. <laughs> oh, they're plate <laughs> Me balls. <laughs> They've drooped too much in a sound by accident. Oh, me <laughs> balls. It becomes, it becomes more of a problem the older you get. You're like, oh, my balls. <laughs> my balls. <laughs> Testicular this floor torsion. Doesn't properly Ooh. support my balls. Yeah, I'll, I'll say is that chair properly supports the balls. No problem there. That's no problems at all. All right, moving on to the news. Now, my balls are not news. They're well known across all five continents. So 
unfortunately, what is currently, or what was affecting all five continents as well was the Blizzard Games under a pretty serious DDoS attack for uh, right. much of today. Um, I think we can fully expect this to pop up again during Legion launch, although whether or not you'll be able to tell the difference between a DDoS and WoW server no. launch. I was literally going to make that goof. I'm glad you did it instead. Um, I'm on point <laughs> with the goofs. Uh, to be fair... I remember the first day of WoW in the EU launch, going down, buying my copy at game, coming back home and sitting there for six hours so I couldn't even enter my code because the website was down. So we dealt with that for fucking 12 years. That's so. every Blizzard launch. It People really are is, like, yeah. are like, oh, I can't wait to get home and play right away. It's like, you live in a fake reality. One that has <laughs> I can't wait to open some cards in the new Hearthstone expansion. It's just like the card pack's there for two minutes before it opens. It's like, oh. It's, yeah. I'm curious, though. This DDoS stuff has been happening for months. Like, it yeah. is, if you look at the launcher, it's a consistent thing. Like, oh, every yeah. so often, they're, they're attacked again. I'm really curious why that is. I'd love to know Pisses the people off. I know. I mean, the only real reason, you know, outside of you know, making demands from companies, you know, and trying to basically blackmail them is to piss people off. And Blizzard games are very popular. Is, yeah, do you think this is like the hacker inter like the the the, the let, let, let's let's not call them hackers, shall we? They're, they're yeah, script I, kiddies. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like <laughs> the the like we're angry because you didn't let us have our free version of your game kind of like anger like there's got it's probably got nothing to do with it it probably has nothing probably to do with the game at all being assholes. yeah it's just most of it this is you know it's like it's when they they take down psn on christmas day or whatever was it for any good reason no it's just because they want to be dicks and upset people and that's a good mm -hmm. time to do it right, that's what you know ddos is as brute force as it gets there's no finesse involved in it it's literally just it's clogging up a pipe with too much shit you know, you throw away too much shit at something and it, it dies. And there's not, there are ways to mitigate it, but there's no true way other than just having more server power than the shit that's coming at you right. to stop it entirely. You've just got to have more more pipes than they've to, got shit to shove in the you pipes. You have to power through it. Like you really you do. Yeah. Throw, like, throw money at the problem until you have enough to take care of anything, really. Yeah, it's... But it works, you know. Uh, obviously, it, it DDoS occurs against companies. It occurs against individuals. It's not hard to do. There are literally services that you can hire to do it because it's technically stress testing, you know. Very uh, easy. Yeah. Obviously, it won't do it for weeks on end. You know, those services will only do it for a short period of time. But that's enough to knock a streamer <laughs> offline or whatever. That's why you have to be very careful with your IP. All you know? I'm saying is Zero Cool wouldn't do this, guys. If you're out there <laughs> watching... Zero Cool wouldn't do this. No, he wouldn't. He crashed 1,300 computer systems in one day, but he would not do this. He would not do this. He's not a dick. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. All I'm saying it's is Risk Architecture is going to change everything. Yeah. I watched that movie last week. We randomly watch Hackers about every six months. Oh, just... God. It's got to be. That, has, that, that movie's going to get old. more funny every decade. It does. Like, it, seriously. It Absolutely. It genuinely does. The the way the way they envision hacker culture is phenomenal. You know what's right. hilarious? Eventually they'll be accurate. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. When when people that look like Angelina Jolie are hackers, you know, like <laughs> Yeah. And then decide to wear the like the see through outfit. That's how you hack. When Obviously. you hack, Absolutely. mesh it up, baby. Yeah. Mesh it up. You gotta all look like that. You know, you uh, gotta look another like that. Another good one to to watch every couple of decades, <laughs> if you have the spare time, is the net. Oh the God, Sandra, Sandra Bullock. That's, Shit. that's yeah. the other one that 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 is like a fine wine. It it only gets better. Fucking swordfish is pretty bad for that as well. Oh, so, I no, can get away with it for style. You know? <laughs> swordfish gets away with it for style. You know, pure yeah, style. Yeah, it's like yeah, this yeah. is bullshit, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get away with that. Yeah. Uh, no. It, I, I think I mentioned this on last week's show, but there was a, a scene on uh, in the Limitless uh, TV show that parodied this whole thing. It's like, turns out hacking is nothing like Hollywood at all. It's really boring. So instead of showing you a montage, here's like 15 seconds of vines of Mishka the dog saying, I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were telling us about that. Yeah, it's just like, yep, the Holly, Hollywood hacking is definitely bullshit. That's, it's no, just like, go watch Jurassic Park. Go watch Jurassic Park again. It's a it's Unix true. system. No, before that, before the whole crazy, I know this, it's a Unix. She like flies through a virtual world. Yeah. Before that, 
Sam Jackson is doing legitimate hacking. Yeah, yeah. Doss, and you're like, wait, so why does he have it that way? Because <laughs> he's girl's the... like, don't worry, I know how to fly. That doesn't look, that's not how hacking works. No, because he was doing the nitty gritty programming, and she was just she was in the 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 interface that was like for casuals. Obviously, like Obviously. I mean, come on, like that. Casuals are known to use Unix based systems. <laughs> Oh, that God. movie has Dennis Nedry and it has Sam Jackson. Uh, uh, uh. Just literally just uh, hacking uh, uh, program uh. and inputting computer code. And by the time it gets to the point where that's really needed, the girl's like, I got this. And flies <laughs> through towers and buildings. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to me that it has both versions. Like, how do we visualize this? You did it for half a movie. Why do we need to change that? It'd be because, awesome if she was like, don't worry, and just start jamming out some code. That'd be just as cool. Yeah. Indeed. The, the, because they already showed it once, like they already showed Sam Jackson doing it, so they're like, we're not going to show the same thing again, like, and she's just tapping on this. Like, we've already seen it, so like now yeah, it has to be hacking have to just, through the like, eyes of a child. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so moving on to... Uh... This is a bit of a divisive issue. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think of it, because I imagine you've all played probably some part of this series. So the Dead Rising series. Yes. Yes. Uh, we've probably all played one game in the Dead Rising series. Yes? Uh, Duper? Can't remember? Dodger hasn't, but three of us have. That, I guess, <laughs> that, yeah. That'll well, work. Let me, let me do some Google Foo while you... You'll explain. probably find it at some point. So... One thing that's been uh, controversial about the series for quite some time is its love of time limits. And yeah. the idea that if you don't do something with a certain period of time within the game... Oh, I... it's the one where you're in a mall and you just beat up a bunch of zombies. Yes. Yeah, but it's not that at all. Yes. Uh, that's what that's this this is weirdly enough, you just struck on the core crux of the uh, problem without <laughs> <Yeah>. even realizing. <laughs> uh, and we'll get to okay, that in a minute. Perfect. Great. Uh, so that was perfect. Uh, but Dead Rising has had a reputation for being a, like, wacky open-world zombie-killing game. Weirdly enough, the original Dead Rising was really not that. It, that was only its coat of paint. What it actually was was you know, a series of time challenges in an area that you had to really learn to optimally traverse at yeah. the right kind of times. Uh, it, was a, it was actually an exploration game. It was a game about learning your environment and optimizing your character through multiple runs. As weird as it sounds... Okay. How like a lot of modern roguelites are, like Isaac and stuff like that. Dead Rising did that before that, but did it with a full-on AAA open world. Dead Rising was designed to be played multiple times. Like you could fail immediately. In fact, you probably would. Like to actually survive the uh, the three days in the mall it's on tough. your first playthrough. Nine. I mean, for a new player, I'd say it's basically impossible unless you knew what you were doing going in. You were fucked, like, because the game got pro progressively harder through the three days, and your character had a persistent level, and you had, like, your health was, like, um, something that was persistent from session to session. So, your level one reporter, he was fucking useless, and he couldn't do anything, and you're probably gonna die. And that was okay. The game was, like, okay with that. It's like, yeah, you were supposed to die, don't worry. We kept your levels, and we kept your extra health, now do it again. It's like, I've learned a little bit more, and I'm a little bit tougher. Do it again. Learned a little bit more. I'm a bit tougher, and you kind of leveled. And eventually, you would accomplish these goals that it set you. And if you didn't accomplish them, it would be like, now you'll never know what the true story was. But it didn't end the game. You could still get out. You could still escape. You just wouldn't know what the fuck happened. And in fact, yeah. there were different endings based on that. There were characters you could save. There were characters that you'd never see because you fucked something up earlier in the game. And it was designed around these three in-game day play sessions to be repeated over and over and to optimize and discover new things. And that was the coolest thing about Dead Rising to me. And Dead Rising 2 did a lot of the similar stuff, but it widened the play area to a sort of Las Vegas strip. Yeah. Uh, myself and Jesse played the co-op for that, and that was, a, that was a lot of fun. Then Dead Rising 3, it still kept some of it, but it went, oh, we're going to go full open world here, and there was a lot less of that. Dead Rising 4 is saying we're not going to do that at all. It's gone. And some people are like, yeah, that was the worst bit of the game. Like, no, that was the best bit of the game. Now the game sucks. Now the game is just a g generic open world sandbox kill everything ha ha funny game. Which Saints Row already fucking did multiple times. So right. it's not like we need another game in that genre. You know, yeah. It just seems to me like what was special about Dead Rising has, is evaporating because 
people were like, well, I don't like it because I don't like the fact that I, I can't get everything in the first playthrough. I don't like it that I can fail, you know? I'm like, no, it, it's cool that games let you fail and learn. Uh, and to me, Dead Rising did it in the best possible way because you could fail, but you could keep playing. It's like I remember Morrowind. You could kill a key quest NPC. It's like, now the world is doomed. You still play. You know? It's <laughs> like... <laughs> It doesn't it's kind of it's kind of like Dead Rising took more of the uh, paint that you that you described, like the the wacky zombie killing thing. And on the surface level, that's what it always looked like to people, and people really really need to play the first game and understand those mechanics you they just don't described. Truly understand it, yeah. But now it's like the perception of the game is now what it's turning into, which is a wacky zombie wacky open like, world killing, GTA Saints Row GTA thing. thing, and yeah. like. You know, Capcom, God bless them. They don't ever bother to try to make something new anymore. They try to make whatever is looks like it's popular. Oh, shit. Western RPGs, shit. Make Dragon's Dogma. Oh, shit. This is happening. Like, make this. Oh, shit. Uh, action games, shooting things. St like, stop even thinking Resident Evil can be that anymore. You know, <laughs> Resident Evil 7 is definitely a step into... But that's also, like, let's just do Outlast. You know, so for Dead Rising, like I, I played most of them. I, I, I played three a little bit. I didn't three mind was it too the much worst by far. Yeah, I didn't mind it too much. But like, I, I you know what the funnest one was? There was that 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 one that was actually the wacky zombie killing simulator, the HD Ultra Remix. Oh, yeah. The HD thing? Super Fighter Mega Ultra Remix edition or whatever that they did. That never actually made it to PC, but... No, no, it didn't. But, like, that was hilarious because it encapsulated just the dopey stuff into one little download, right? Yeah. And that's that's fine. That, that, that's, that makes sense. But to me, build an entire game around, yeah, let's just have more weapons, more whatever... Like Capcom Vancouver, like is a cool developer and they have a lot of great technology, but it just seems like, you know, they're handicapped by the marketing and what, what, you know, they think the market wants is like, hey, kids just want to open world sandbox games. Things. Well, they open do the because they keep selling, right? You know, they must. I, I don't know what the latest sales figures and stuff like Far Cry Primal are, but, you know, open world sandboxy GTA ish games seem to be the thing. There's a reason why Ghost Recon's basically becoming that. And yeah. a bunch of other games are basically becoming that. That sort of thing is popular, and stuff like Time Limits apparently got in the way of the wacky zombie action things. I didn't want the wacky zombie action. Like it again at that point, you might just play Saints Row. It's it's no different. I mean, like there was also that really uh, that that Wii port of Dead Rising, oh, which chop, made chop it, till you drop, chop till you drop, even, which made start. it into a like RE4 shooter. That thing's hilarious. What a weird curio, well, yeah, you know, in, in like a franchise's history. Yeah, but think, sorry, think, you're, you go uh, ahead. I was gonna say, I think Jesse's been developing a thought. And Indeed, been, yeah, brewing on some feelings. It's either that really needs to go to the toilet. Yeah. I'm not sure. Where. Or yeah, he's constipated. It's one I'm of those. Trying, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to form this thought because it's just sort of percolating. The, when you think about the way 4 and other games very similar to it are being developed, the idea that players want to just go wander around and like not really be confined by time limits. Um, I'm trying to think of, of like gameplay-wise and replayability-wise, if you look at a game like Dead Rising 3, if, if there were, like, stricter time limits in a game like that, or in 4, and you ended up going through the game, and you did what you had to do, and you beat it, but you clearly missed a bunch of stuff, how many of those players would go back and play the game again, thus getting them to keep going back to it, versus a game that was so open world that you wandered around for hours and hours with your friends, dicking, on, like, dicking around, doing whatever, and it kept you playing like because the goal always of the devs is to keep you playing more and more and more yeah right and if it's a time limited game that eventually pushes you towards the end i wonder if they and their thinking are like maybe we don't do that anymore because once they beat it they're like all right well i beat it and you lose half your audience yeah, yeah. I, I like to add something to that thought because i think that there's also an issue of scale dead the original dead rising was a shopping mall that was and, it. And, and the surrounding grounds and the underground parking garage. That was it. I said garage. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Ca it's called a car hold. It's a garage. Oh, it's called a, a garage. It's a fucking garage. It's called a car hold. It's a fucking Yankee car hold. 
<laughs> and then yeah, Dead Cat Rising Kong. 2 was sort of a Vegas strip, but it was still, you know, it was still relatively confined. Dead Rising 3 was like a fucking city, and Dead Rising yeah. 4 is probably even bigger than that. The, the bigger you make your world, the less likely I think you make people be willing to restart their experience. Yeah. You know, whereas I, I think scale has got completely out of control. I think, hey, No Man's Sky, prime fucking example. People apparently buy games on the size of fucking scale. It's like, yeah, but I prefer more focused, well-designed experience. To me, Dead Rising 1 me is still too. the best Dead Rising game because a shopping mall, mall, it's America, we can call it that, is a perfect venue for right. that kind of experience and it's just it's self-contained it's got enough variety in it to keep it interesting but it's self-contained enough that you can learn it you can learn the layout because it's designed logically and that's what encourages multiple playthroughs whereas if you have an entire fucking city you're not going to remember the layout you're following the auto yeah. nav you know you don't the remember that the the store with the battle axes is on the second floor over to the right in this district here you know the you follow the auto map it's even more than that because I think that Rising Four is like we're going back to the original mall, but also the entire city around the entire it. city surrounding it. So that's yeah. the entire part of the exercise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. I, I I want it to be. I I just I don't see the appeal of these big large worlds because generally speaking, there's fuck all in them, and I'd prefer no, a more interesting. Illusion. It's the illusion of content, right? Yes, like, it is. It's absolutely like, that. Like, yeah. go going back to what you said, I think most of us uh, here would love the idea of a very like focused dead rising zombie murder game and for most people when they're playing a game it's if i beat this game in four or five hours rather than go back and replay it it's i'm going to the internet to bitch up a storm this game is four or five hours yeah so most devs are like well fuck that let's just give them this crazy ass long game that most people won't even end up finishing the main storyline, and they'll just stick around. And they'll feel like they got value for money from it. Yeah. Absolutely, and I feel like that's the big conceit here in this and many other games is just like fill it with bullshit. If they beat it, then they beat it after doing like fifty hours of gameplay of them walking around. And then, like, they, yeah. then they felt like they got their value for money, even though ninety yeah. percent of what they did was repetitive wastes of time. And mostly yeah. done on their own. Like I ran around with friends and murdered shit. Like it wasn't even it's just they created the game. They minecrafted their way through the game. They made it what it was. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's yeah and then they got rid of the time limits. And it's crazy that I would be one of those people who hates time limits. Like don't fucking put time limits on my shit. Going back and playing Majora's Mask again I truly learned to appreciate like how fundamentally awesome that game is because of like the seven Because of the time limit, yes. Yeah. Sets and having to deal with like, you're not going to get everything this, the first time through this game. You're going to miss some shit. And if you try, good luck. Good luck. The world's going to end and it's going to be your fault because you couldn't prioritize. <laughs> like, yeah. And you go back and you sort of like realize that years ago, I hated Majora's Mask. Like fundamentally hated yeah. it. And only yeah. going back to replay it that I like realize the genius of like how focused of a game that was and i think i think yeah i think looking at games now they've lost focus it's all about showing how big and enormous your game is and all the things you could do in the game but actually don't do well it's, it's like what i said before about like oh i gotta get the kids gotta get the kids gotta get the kids on the game oh i gotta play because like a kid will not sit there and then like, what what uh tb already like described is like sit there learn oh fuck i fucked up learn do it again learn do it again like it's so much easier to just build a giant map fill it with bullshit like you said and just like and and it's 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 so much simpler to for a marketing guy or a vice president at capcom or whatever in America, at least, would just go. Well, we just do that because that's that's what people like, and so people want. It it would be nice to have. Like, I I'm not a fan of the time limit per se, but I am a fan of like focused design. And you know, when when I uh, put in some time into No Man's Sky, I was like, man, I really wish these planets were designed by someone and yeah. not by an and algorithm. Not just a bunch of aimless space. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, like I'll, I'll give the rising Four a chance certainly, but I'll be, I'll do exactly what you said I'll do. I'll probably play it for about five hours, get kind of bored of it because it's aimless wandering and, and killing things on the map and doing whatever missions it wants me to do. Like dead rising three really was for the most part. I didn't, I didn't beat that. I mean, I, I beat the first dead rising. That's not that 
part of a you know thing after a while. Yes, but did you get the true true ending? I did not. Nah, I see. Get the true 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 ending. You see, that's so. why I have to play the game. So there's a true 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 ending. True 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 ending. True, true, true ending. <laughs> I think that goes back to the kids. God, we're so fucking old. It goes back to the kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are ruining that... everything. I mean, there's not even a question about that. <laughs> fucking millennials. No. Like... That was that was known. But but the idea that I would say I think there has to be some study somewhere that says this because that's the way companies are going. That consumers as of now are um, on to the next thing very quickly. Yeah. So getting them to go back and get the true true ending is not going to happen unless. It's, you know, like they're hardcore into your game. So if you're like Metal Gear Revengeance, no one, like very few people are going to go back and get the S rank on everything. Like they're going to play it and move on. So, well, yeah, I like, mean, you know, if you, if you actually had any skill, you get S rank first time through. Obviously. Yeah, that's true. Fucking scrubs. So anyway, but like the idea <laughs> that people go back and try to get the choo-choo ending and all that, I don't think that happens much anymore. I think it they doesn't. It, take the ending they got and move on. And yeah. so that's why they're like, well, let's make a game that doesn't end. So they keep well, playing it forever. I mean, and that's the genius of Dead Rising is that the way that the timers were set up and the fact that it was a three, it was based over three days, meant that the game was uh, naturally replayed. It made sense to replay because it wasn't some twenty or thirty hour campaign. It was like two or three hours, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and it felt more natural to do that. It's like, oh god, I'm starting again. Well, you're not, because you carried a bunch of stuff over from the last playthrough, right. and your previous playthrough wasn't all that long. Plus, I mean, if you died in that game, you actually died, you know, and you had to start again. You know, you could save in toilets, but you had to actually get there, and learning where the toilets were was actually, like, a, a legit part of that, that experience and everything. It was, I just, I want more of that, and there's not a lot of games that do that. <laughs> It's weird because, you know, with the, the popularity of Souls games and that type of play style of dying and learning, dying and learning, and in Dead Rising, you can certainly make the case that you're just replacing maybe one or two tough enemies with like a mob of enemies, like how the zombie mob acts as like the, those one or two like like really tough placements in a, in a Souls game. And I, I like I don't think that's that hard for Capcom to try to get across in either marketing uh, or trailers or whatever. But sorry, I was I was gonna say I I think that too many people have been trained by just brainless brawlers, mm. that, like you know trying to take a mob of zombies that you can just smack with whatever's around seriously is difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no, very true. Yeah, it is, it is it's true. But that's actually you know a good point as well. You know that they increase the density of the zombies, but they reduce the threat. You know, yeah. especially the first night in Dead Rising, there's not actually that many zombies in a zombie horde in Dead Rising because you know it was a 2006 Xbox game. Actually, yeah, it may have been even older than that. But there, each zombie was a legit threat, and you had to worry about him. A couple of you know, a few zombies in a group, especially at night. That could be dangerous. You got to watch out for that, you know. Whereas now it's like, hey, you want to kill five hundred zombies at once with your Uber chainsaw laser, dude? <laughs> you want to do that? It's like, yes. Now, I, yeah, says the thirteen-year-old, but no, says me, who didn't really. Want I'm thirteen. That. Yes, pretty much in spirit, anyway. In, in spirit, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's move on to releases anyway, because we're rapidly running out of time. So okay. I'm sure I'm sure we'll find sure. two or three things worth playing this week. Um. Well, today, August 23rd, we have Island 359. Yeah, which that, I don't think I've ever heard of. Neither have I. That just popped up on Steam. Island 359. It's a VR game. VR survival. Oh God, here we go. Uh, there's dinosaurs <laughs> in it. It's a Black Hawk helicopter. Someone has a Desert Eagle for some reason. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Players will use the guns that they found around there. Why do you find guns around there? It's basically like a Jurassic Park VR for some reason you have guns game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, that's fun. Right. Sure. Good stuff. Yeah. Unique. Yeah. Alrighty. Next like up it. is Electrovolt 2, which the original one was on like addicting games like Flash sites. Oh, it um, certainly looks it. <laughs> yeah. So the second one is kind of following that style. Puzzle, yeah, a, puzzle, puzzle platformer. Puzzle platformer. Yes. Um, the next one is called Velia. V e i l i a. Exploration adventure game. A cursed girl has been separated from her body. It's now your job to find her. Uh, apparently, there's a sorcerer involved in it or something. Yeah, you explore an island, you craft shit, you solve the puzzles and all that kind of craft thing. stuff. Cool. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, uh, that's, sick that's dope. Oh god. Uh, next one is called Adventure Communist. 
Uh, I assume this is a takeoff of a venture capitalist. It actually is. Is it by the same company? It actually is. <laughs> yep. It, it's a spin on an adventure capitalist. So same That's kind of fun. gameplay, apparently, but with uh, communism. There you go. Great. Uh, then we've got Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Of course. Uh, Worms WMD. Oh, yep. yeah. Okay. I've heard some decent things about that. They completely that, that, redid like 2D graphic style and everything. It's I didn't I didn't know this till yesterday, but apparently it has tons of guests. Like there's like ukulele and, and Joanna and, Dark yeah, as well. Yeah, like there's lots of old rare IPs thrown in there. Like yeah, that's yeah. I heard some it like looks, YouTubers did some voices for it, and they, like you said, there were some game characters in it. It looks great. Like I like they did away with the 3D stuff. Yeah, the the art design yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. I don't I'll hate play it. some worms again. I haven't played. Sure, like that, I mean it'll be the same as the last ten of them, but whatever. Yeah, but if you haven't played those, like they have released them. Like I think there was like you know some new versions that the Team Seventeen released, like I don't know three or four years ago. Yeah. And if you haven't played Worms like for a while, it's like yeah, just play it again. It's still a, it's still a great design. You know? Yep. The next game is called Zombie Boom. It's a which... physics puzzle game involving zombies. By the way, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, you can't make this up. No, you really can't. <laughs> the game after that is called Duelist with a Y. Yeah, yeah that's really. um, that's got quite a lot of hype behind it. It's a collectible card game with a tactical board element to it. Uh, a lot of people seem to like that one. I personally have not gone into it. I should try it at some point, but yeah, it's... It looks uh, like apparently it's they paid almost every Hearthstone streamer to play it at some point. I so, bet. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's another zombie game. game, isn't it? Yeah, the next game is called Zomba Sight. It's Aren't a zombie apocalypse just? action Is there RPG. crafting in it? Oh, I bet there is. Probably. The game after that is called Maze Roller. Maze is there crafting and zombies in Maze Roller? I hope not. <laughs> is it like the Maze Runner series, but featuring a guy who just rolls? Because that'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, it's roller. a hamster and a hamster ball. And it, you uh, is it possibly a meerkat of some sort, and <laughs> you're a rat. You're a rat. And you're a rat. You roll around a maze, and you literally fight Shrek. I'm. There's a screenshot of you fighting Shrek. Yes, it looks like there's a lot of copyright infringement going on in this game. All right, next. Next up is called Auric 2D MMORPG. It reminds me a lot of RuneScape. It's like a nostalgia yes. MMO. Yeah, that or something like, like Ultima Online. Yeah, I think we saw this last week actually. Yeah, mm. early access. Next. Yeah. Next game is called Mad Nords. Probably an epic quest. Uh, that's the name of that's the subtitle. It looks like an RPG maker game. So yeah, that's that. Next. Alrighty. Next up is called Metrico, an input-driven game in a world of infographics. Whatever what the fuck the that dick? means. All the bar charts, line diagrams, and pie charts react to what you're doing. It's a combination oh, of exploration, skill, experimentation, no. thinking outside the box. This sounds like a living nightmare. Yeah. So any of you who watch us play games where we have to do charts Mathematics, and shit, yeah, yeah and fucked. you want to just rip your eyeballs out, you can play this game. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. Next. Metrico. Next is called Evolvation. Terrible name, but it, it's a, uh, a class-based, fast-paced, multiplayer arena space flying shooter with multiple game modes, which sounds cool to me, but I it's an early access game. I don't know if it's actually any good, and it has a terrible name. I will say that. All right, great. The next game is called Streamer Simulator. Fuck I feel off. like maybe we Fuck don't have to off. even look at that. <laughs> Fuck the simulator. Uh, that games. might be interesting. Though. No, don't. That's, that's what that's they want you game. to do. No, but it that's, might be interesting. No, though. that's how those games sell. All the fucking YouTubers are just like, aha, I'm going to play this guy's head. And it sells to like eight year olds. Fuck it. No. Don't reward the... them. Oh, okay. But don't reward the them. One? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> next up is called Farm Life Nature's Adventure. Oh, yeah. It's like that shitty Harvest Moon clone by looks of it that everyone mm. apparently hates next next up is called bird jewel reality oh god uh <laughs> welcome to bird jewel reality the first open world flying and air racing game for htc vive you ever dreamed of flying like a bird or a superhero this vr experience yes. is for you i have dreamed of those things I, as to whether yeah. or not that provides it i don't know uh there should know. be a game based on virtuosity, the old the old uh, Russell Crowe, a uh, Denzel Washington movie. I'd Absolutely. That. that would sell millions, literally millions. <laughs> next. Uh, the next game. Oh, shit. Guys, the next game is Backstage Pass, which is uh, the visual novel that Krender and I are currently playing on my channel. Oh, so okay. there you go. Pause, pause. Yes. Did you get an early copy of this? Is that why you're currently no, playing? No, it was... Um, 
It was in early access for two years because they were waiting oh. on voice lines. God damn, I thought you look. I thought you made it. I thought oh. that they were people send you early access. Like we're gonna, you are, you're the weeb. We're sending it. To you. <laughs> <laughs> you are, are the weeb. I'm not quite there yet. I'm not quite there yet. The I Drew thought you made. It. I was so excited. I was like, I wish you were. Oh, they send you an early. <laughs> you just said yes. But yeah, for any of you who were waiting for it to come out of early access. There it is. It's great. You play a makeup that. artist, and there are a sh- smorgasbord of, of men who all need makeup done. It's great. Cool. Uh, the next Whoa. game is called Gray Phobia, and it's the, the black, white, and red all over game. That yeah, that thing we saw last week. Last yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to think of that yet at this point. Me neither. The next game is called The Journey Home. That sounds familiar. Is this... Is this uh... Oh yeah, it's no. that VR. It's the space VR interactive story game. Uh, you will be an astronaut who failed the mission, gets stuck in space, and haunted by past memories. It's like, all right, not what I thought it was at all. No, not not the journey down. That's a different game entirely. The next game is called New Outbreak. Oh it god, I bet a, it's a zombie game, isn't it? Uh, it's a top down <laughs> zombie a survival top game. game. Oh, yeah. hey. Hey. Oh, and this next one, the one after that, the one after that is called what? Z Year One. Oh, it is about that. It's, a ca- it's actually a zombie card game because oh, the, the final genre that hadn't been infiltrated has now it has happened. The last bastion has <laughs> fallen. The gates are open. They're flooded with them. Yep. Uh, is that the noise that we can make whenever we find a zombie game anymore? Uh, Just, uh, oh, uh, 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 Next. It's like oddly Tarzan esque. <laughs> it is know. a bit, isn't it? We're just summoning this up. Skyboats? Yeah, take uh, control of the winds, discover vast riches in the clouds. Yeah, you see, I might actually like this. It's um, it's a strategy game in the uh, vein of Euro style board games, sort of a mm-hmm. hex based Catan like thing. Yeah, uh, right. That's something I might actually try. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have a look at that. Um, after that, we have. Ha! Tank yeah. Hero VR. Tank Hero. I mean, that seems like the best kind of hero, right? Tank Top Hero. Yeah. <laughs> v- <laughs> it's a VR platform tank game, which seems like ideal for VR, actually. Put you yeah, in a yeah, fucking I mean, tank. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Give that a shot. Yeah, absolutely. Next. <laughs> August 24th, we have 50 years. 50 years of zombies. <laughs> no, God, and no why would you say that? And zombie crafting. Craft as many <laughs> zombies as, as possible. Zombies. <laughs> and then destroy them. Oh, God. It's a strategy game where you pr- cr- you protect clans and nations. As to how you actually do that, I don't have a fucking clue. And <laughs> just yeah, looking at know. it, it's like, this looks a bit odd. Next. I don't know. Yeah, All I don't right. know. No. The next one is called Tribe of Pock. It's one of those games where you're in control of like a small tribe and you try to help them survive and grow. Uh, um, basically play RimWorld instead then. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah, if you want all of your happiness ripped away. Well, that's what all every game in there. You know, it's basically, <laughs> we're all trying to be Dwarf Fortress levels of misery and failing uh, to get there. Next. The next game is called Five Champions of Canaan. Mm, um, only five? Apparently only five. Okay. It seems it like a, a game? I think it's no, I think it's a sort of three D brawler of sorts. Um, from what I can tell, I don't recognize the developer or anything like that. Uh, it's part of gladiatorial arena combat and stuff like that. It, it looks. A little, I'm all about gladiatorial combat. Oh yeah, I love that shit. The question is yeah. whether or not it's any good. That's a different yeah, matter no, entirely. Sure. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's. Uh, it looks. Huh. Actually, it's. Yeah, it looks like it's got a more Titan Quest esque loot system in it as well sort of action rpg okay uh, all right it doesn't look too bad actually cool next next up is called cross out it's an early access game uh Cross-out. craft unique battle machines <laughs> from dozens of interchangeable parts in yeah this but this post- looks sexy as fuck though game. like that yeah, looks great yeah it looks like mad max the yeah, game it, this actually looks <laughs> genuinely good i'm hoping it doesn't suck it's like you build your fucking post-apocalyptic mech tank car thing and all that shit and there's pvp yeah. advanced it damage modeling it, it looks, looks good great. it's it's mad max the game the game yeah wait what okay, why do cool. i know of t- targum <coughs> Tar- they've made a, i think it's a russian developer for a couple of yes they made that uh battle chess game oh. Yeah, but it's not it's not really a much of a pedigree, but you know, okay. Yeah. Oh wait, Gaijin Entertainment's involved in this? They're the publishers of War Thunder. 
and mm. star conflict. Ha! Huh, curious mm. and curiouser. Interesting. <laughs> All right, next. Cool. Next is abduction. But spelled with an O an for o. some reason, yes. Which is, apparently it's also abduction. a registered trademark from the creators of Mist and Riven. Really? What? You sure? How many of them exactly? Isn't, uh, it, yeah. isn't Mist and Riven like two brothers that made Mist? It's by it's by Cyan, uh, who I believe yeah. did make Mist and Riven. Yeah, it's it's a Mist or Riven esque exploration game. Doesn't look too shabby Finally. at all, actually. Huh? Yeah, we haven't had one of those in a it while. It has crafting and zombies. It better not. <laughs> next, uh, the next one looks pretty cool. It's called Metris Soccer. It is a street football, street soccer game. Ah, it's inspired by the old FIFA Street games. Those were pretty mm -hmm. cool, actually. Like they're more trick based than anything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that could be good. Looks cool. Yeah. Is, is it like uh, is it like a Sega Soccer Slam? Does anyone remember that one? I don't remember that one. Uh, what that was that? that was a Sega Soccer Slam. Like put in fun racism, like like punch out racism. Just what we need. Yeah, no, like sometimes the world needs a little fun racism in their sports games. Um, the next game, the next game is called Sally's Law. Sally's Law. That sounds like curious. That sounds like what would happen after a child abduction case, but... Yeah. Extraordinary lucky choice. girl. No one can stand in her way. It's basically a puzzle platformer. You're trying to save your critically ill father, but apparently you're doing so by rolling in a ball. I'm not really sure why that is. <laughs> Katamari Damacy to Kata. save you. It won Dad. a bunch of awards at some indie games festivals that I've never heard of, so I think uh -huh. it's Korean because it looks like they won the award at the Busan Connect Festival. Busan is in Korea, I believe. Yeah, it Interesting. is. Interesting, yeah. Next. Next up is called Dungeon Punks. It is calling itself oh! a tag team brawler. I've played this. Yeah. I played is it good? this. Um, you, if they've improved it since what I played at PAX, it might be up your alley. It's a, it's a brawler. Um, it's got a little bit Guardian Heroes in it because it's got right. a bunch of different um, magical powers you can use. What I liked about it was the conceit that uh, you're basically a bunch of like weird ass mercenaries fighting for insurance money, I believe, <laughs> which I found to be quite fun. Uh, it felt pretty stiff when I played it. it this was right. like six months ago. Hopefully they fixed that, but it definitely had a good Golden Axe feel to it. There's a loot system in it, because of course there is. There's some RPG elements. The sense of humor was good. It's just that the fighting felt really stiff. The animations weren't there yet. It wasn't that right. responsive. If they've improved that, this will probably be pretty good. Because oh. I've seen trailers for this, and I was like, hey, that looks like a thing. So Yes, that is. it's certainly a thing. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Uh, the game after that is literally just called Valley. I can't and find I tell it on you what, Steam anywhere. I cannot find it. Yeah. Stop calling your games by generic words. It makes them impossible to find. SEO, <laughs> yeah. motherfuckers, do you speak it? We're just going to move right along. Indeed. August 25th, we've got Glory by Example. Looks like an RPG maker game to me. After a worldwide virus outbreak, <laughs> better not have fucking zombies in it. Next. Oh, damn it. Uh, in case of emergency release Raptor. Oh, I guess that got oh, delayed. Yeah. Keeps, keeps yep. getting pushed, yeah. Yep. I guess that got pushed, all right, I'm next. I release so it, that release it for what? Fuck's In case of emergency delay Raptor. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> next. next one is called The Other 99. It's a single player first person action survival game because of course it is. The only way off the island is through The Other 99. Oh, so I guess you have yeah. to like maybe kill 99 people yeah, to leave no. or something? Whoa. Sort of a I've battle royale style thing? Yeah, I've seen this before and like that's, that's, you just said all the details about it. Like, I, I hope that's, because that's a cool idea. I like the whole battle royale idea. I don't think it's been fully fleshed out yet. The whole Hunger the, Games notion. The, there was that game that was released a few months ago on Steam called The Culling, which was. Yes, the uh, people seem to like The Culling right? quite a yeah. lot. Yeah, I've heard good things so, about that. Yeah. Mm. Next. Cool. Next is Minesweeper VR. I don't I think, think we, we really need to explain that, that. Next. Uh, next is called Everything is Peachy, which is a resource gathering game where you're trying to uh, help all of these robots that are run by peaches keep on existing. <laughs> okay. It's adorable. It, look, it looks really <laughs> cute. Uh, next up is called Fern Bus Simulator. It's the first simulation of the very popular intercity buses. The very first day in the life of a coach driver on the German Autobahn. The fun, oh fun, God. fun of the Autobahn. Uh, <laughs> 20,000 kilometers wow. of German route network of Flixbus and 40 cities for simulated. My name is Kraftwerk. 
Uh, uh, the Final Fantasy Autobahn. Uh, those these <laughs> games sell millions of copies as well. What? Like, they do. They really do. The good they simulator do. games yeah. they sell like hotcakes in Germany. You're really a liar. Popular. I'm not lying. I'm no, not it's, lying. It's, <laughs> why do you think they keep making them, Brew? I am deadly like, serious, man. Make so Autobahn. much money off of these. Yep. The, the, the autobahn. It's, it's fun. The, it's, it's hey, fun. fanboys, enjoy your autobahn. Yeah. Next. Next up is Mugen Souls Z. Ah, yes. The infamous mix of anime brawler and booby simulator, Mugen Souls yes. Z. Bunch of chibi people <laughs> and <laughs> giant <laughs> breasts. And supposedly quite good. Um, it's uh, This one, I think, is actually like more of a strategy RPG rather than a brawler um but chibis with giant breasts this yeah is... that's a bit weird uh, i guess they're not chibi in the cutscenes where they show you the giant breasts so you know Stupid. it does make you uncomfortable yeah okay cause I, like you keep calling things brawlers which is fine but like we were always on the assumption that anyone from the uk or from europe in general call brawlers button bashers no 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 we call them beat ups Man, we call yeah, them no, no, that's what they should be called. But we had like a we on our podcast we had a letter saying like, "Hey, I enjoy when you guys play button bashers." No, I like, don't know, recall anyone ever player? using that term in the UK. Well, you ever. should. No, it's it's made up. That guy fucking bamboozled you, man. You know, he's leading you on. <laughs> All right. But yeah, this is actually a strategy RPG. It's not a brawler okay. at all. It's completely a mistake. I was thinking of actual Mugen, which is that fighting yeah. game which fighting has game every game. character ever. So ignore me completely. The next one is called The Life of Greether, which uh, looks like kind of weird. I thought that it must be a horror game at first. Okay. It says, you are just a simple farmer and your wife has not returned. Venture across the open medieval world and find her. All of the screen caps are like at night. Like everything looks great. Dark. Yeah, that's a good way to demonstrate your game. Just show nothing. No, no, no. I mean, like, it just looks like it's it's nighttime in the world. Mm-hmm. Um. And I don't know, it, it looks like kind of creepy, but it doesn't say that it's a horror game. So huh. I'm like, and you're, 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 it's your hard to tell what it is. Your wife hasn't come home and you have to go out and find her. That's kind of an interesting idea, but yeah, it doesn't actually say if it's horror or not. It doesn't say. It, okay. just, yeah. it just is like criminals and other foul creatures roam the wild. So make sure you prepare. Probably bad. Next. <laughs> Uh, next up is N plus plus. Is that yeah. the, is that the upgraded version of N, like the Ninja two D Ninja yes. game? Yes, yes, yeah, it is. I assume that would it. Yeah, that that game is is pretty slick. Yeah. Uh, next is not even worth talking about. It's from two thousand and three, so fuck that. <laughs> okay, then moving on, Tavernier. This looks pretty cool. Um, the art style looks quite interesting. It's a mix of tavern management and interactive fiction. You players are like huh. a barkeep in an in a fantasy inn. Uh, so it seems like a a fantasy version of that uh, cyberpunk bar tender simulator thing you were playing. Oh, uh, Valhalla. Yeah, you know the you know the one. Yeah, Dead Dodger played a bunch of that one. It actually yeah. looks pretty cool. Uh, this next game looks like Long Live the Queen, but just in a different part of the world, and I'm really into it. It's With called, really bad art, by the looks of it. It's called Mariam. I don't think so. I don't like the art style, but I guess it's very subjective. It's just the fact that it uses 5,000 different fonts, like, everywhere. Yeah. There's so there's one that's screenshot okay. here where there's, like, four different fonts in the same well, screen. That's, that's not an art problem. That's, yes, like, a is. UI design problem. Same shit. <laughs> the art of the characters, I think, looks cute. But, yeah, okay, it, looks like, right. it looks like Long Live the Queen sure. to me, just yeah. in a different setting. Um, next up is called Mount Wingsuit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a VR wingsuit game, which, if done properly, would be fucking awesome, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is the one that's done it properly, but I'm there's, just glad that a lot of these companies are trying these different concepts on VR. One of them will get it right, I'm sure. There's a game that was released on the 360. I'm not sure if it ever got released on Steam called Skydive, which was also wingsuits, but it was it was hilarious because if you just hit into the side of a mountain, your body would just physics out of world. Wee. It was hilarious. Exactly. Uh, I'm actually, uh, it reminds me of PAX. I'm going to get to play steep, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw myself in a wingsuit at a mountain as fast as possible and see what the physics engine does with my character. Right, right, right. It's going to okay. be great. Next. And the next one I can't find. Ayakatsura. Uh- yeah. I found oh, it. Oh, it's oh, it's an I. Yeah, that's, that's an I. It's not an L. I was like uh, Lactura. Can't it, find it. It's, uh, it looks like a really old school shooting game, but it has some sort of RPG and co op mechanics and stuff like that in it. It, it. I mean, aesthetically, it looks hideous, um, which is not helpful. Uh, so that doesn't really convey the sense of what the game is supposed to be. Oh well. 
<laughs> Next up is called Panzer Warfare. According to this, is the best game about tanks of all time. It looks like a piece of meme shit. Next. <laughs> Stay close is the name of the Stay next close, one. yeah. It's open world horror game with apparently Great. single player and co op. Uh, yeah, it's first person horror game. Yeah. You have to protect Some your friend. Some of the friend. screenshots look like the, yeah. the. They look good. The atmosphere looks nice, yeah. yeah. It's called Stay Close. Stay close, Stay close. yeah. Okay. Because I, I have to research all horror games. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> the, next game my is channel, called, so. the next game is called The West. Uh, again, also looks really good, actually. Um, I believe this is a Wild West survival game. Hmm. Which actually, like, look at the, um, yeah, there's a, there's apparently there's a building system in it. You can do attacks on caravans. This looks, if this is well done, this will be really cool. Like, it reminds me of the uh, the exploration elements in um, Red Dead Redemption, where oh, it's just cool, like you come man. across shit. This, if these screenshots are even remotely representative, this game looks fucking amazing. Like, aesthetically beautiful. I'm hoping. Is it just called The West? It's just called The West. It's an early All access right. uh, Western survival game. I'm actually okay. interested in this one, just because this doesn't look shit. Hopefully, I've not been deceived. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to go with I've been with deceived, that. right? <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, next. The next one is Drive Megalop Mega Megapolis. It looks like it's a really a, shitty driving game. Yeah, just kind of a shitty driving yeah, simulator next. game. Aww. Next game is Mitch Berry Challenge. Uh, all right. Not Mitch Berry Challenge, but Mitch colon Berry Challenge. A lighthearted retro platformer. You're a lizard. You're collecting berries and stuff. Yeah. You're a it's lizard. a challenge to get those berries. <laughs> and your name's Mitch. You're a lizard, Harry. Next. Ah, <laughs> uh, the next one is uh star mazer dsp it looks like a dope little bullet hell yeah actually looks nice i like the art style of it me too a lot of color in that that's cool yeah so there's mm. that uh the one after that is the lords of earth flame the lords oh, of shit. earth flame uh it already has dlc the logo looks awesome it's a text-based role-playing game which i'm actually into uh it looks like a choose your own adventure book awesome that looks really nice actually really good art in it by the looks of it i might play this i i like i love games like that it's all done through a parchment scroll interface with a non-linear plot and different endings right. and shit i love that i've always loved that since i was a kid i used to read those books all the time so yeah i'm into that you, know, you ever well, notice we're actually getting some good games this time around whereas last week was like yeah. this is all dog shit <laughs> <laughs> there's actually some decent looking shit going on here huh the next this one is called too. neon shadow uh, a, cyberpunk, cyberpunk FPS. FPS, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always, I'm always wary of any game that says inspired by classic shooters because I feel like, do you actually know what made those games good? So few people know exactly what made those shooters yeah, good. But totally like, right. Yeah, I, I, I've seen this before, and I was like, that the screenshots look nice, but yeah, I'd yes. have, I'd have to try it to see if it's, yeah. it's decent. I will try it though because I am curious of old school style um, shooters. Um, yeah. As to whether or not they actually do it right. Next up is Space Ranger Ask. Man, Ask I was super ask. disappointed seeing this because um, I thought it was a sequel to Space Rangers, which is this weird as fuck Russian game that has every genre ever in it. <laughs> it's If you have a chance to play Space Rangers, uh, play Space Rangers HD. It has in it um, turn-based strategy, real-time strategy, a text adventure, an arcade top-down bullet hell shooter, <laughs> trading, um, space exploration, a visual novel, base <laughs> build, it, all of this in one fucking game. It's so fucking bizarre, but it's so <laughs> unique and it actually kind of works. So if you have a chance to play Space Rangers HD or War Apart, it's 15 bucks on Steam. I, I guarantee you'll never play a game like that ever again. Interesting. It's just like it's like we love every genre. Let's do all of them right. <laughs> to varying degrees of success. But you know, it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, the next game is Puzzling Rooms VR, which is literally just a bunch of puzzles in puzzles. VR. Uh, you know, game... es escape rooms could really be a thing in VR, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah totally. absolutely. Yeah. That could work. Yeah. Oh God, what is this? Uh, Beeftacular. Beeftacular. Is that what you're looking at? <laughs> Also known as I am blatantly a fucking meat boy clone. Jesus Christ, this is blatant. Mm -hmm. Look at this. <laughs> yep, that is uh that is definitely a meat boy clone. All his right. His name is Beeftacular though. Yeah, it's legally it's different. It's not even which is trying. The best type of different. 
It, and it claims oh, the, the, the devs taking the piss. It claims it's inspired by Ten Second Ninja. I'm like, fuck you! You know <laughs> what you're doing. I almost have to admire his tenacity, actually. Yeah, no, it's it's noble. <laughs> That's blatant. That's brazen, is what that is. Next. Next up is Optica, which looks like m my nightmare. Um, oh, it's yeah, a game light that's entirely, manipulation. Yeah, light manipulation. It looks Anytime cool. Anytime I'm though. playing a puzzle game and they're like, you have to bounce this light all over the light room. Off. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you have to split the light into its component colors and shit, use prisms. That's neat, though. I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh,. Yeah, it looks good. I'm just yeah. saying I'm going to be terrible at it. No, I'm not even I'm not going to play it. No. <laughs> the next yeah. game is called uh oh, it's Life is Feudal Forest Village. So, what what is that? Cuz I know Life is Feudal was another one of those multiplayer survival games. I think it got abandoned. It's a city builder. Yeah. It's a city building game based on the Life is Feudal universe. So, it looks like it looks a bit like Banished if you remember that. Mm -hmm. Um potentially cool. Like because that, that might very much adopt some of the elements that I liked from games like Life is Feudal, like building a village and having it survive various things. But apparently right. it's a strategy game. I could, if that's good, I could dig that. Mm-hmm. It's not too, it doesn't look too shabby. No, honestly. it doesn't, it doesn't. It is early access, so I don't know, but... Next. Cool. Next up, Rogue Contracts Syndicate. 2D action game by looks of it. Next. Okay. Next is The Housewife. Oh. Yo, what is this about? Probably not as exciting as we hoped. Yes. Uh, Maybe. Uh, make sure the house is maintained. She lives to keep her husband happy. Oh, uh, learn how the world changes for an abused person. Ah. Interesting. Okay, right. So definitely not a happy-go-lucky game then. No. Into the psyche of, of the victim. Uh, so, yeah, it's very much a sort of message game. Which mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not fundamentally against that idea. I think games can be definitely used to communicate that kind of thing. They're yeah. gonna have to be super treading on eggshells, though. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, like, a lot of the uh, after Depression Quest came out, that a lot of people came out and said, "Yeah, this doesn't represent depression at all. This is nonsense." So you've got, you've got to, when you're doing that kind of message-based gameplay, you've got to be very careful. Uh, but mm. I still think there's a lot of potential within interactive fiction to really explain and explore those issues. I'm just yeah. hoping this does it correctly and doesn't make a mockery of I it. I think that's that's what's so difficult about making a game Very like that so. too, right? Is is that everybody's experience is also different. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, you can't really put it all in a box. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I mean, all no, credit no, to them for uh, trying it. I hope they do it well. Yeah, go... I don't know if this is going to be that experience. I just watched the trailer and... <laughs> yeah, I... It's... It... The last shot of the trailer is you chained up in the basement with, like, blood everywhere. Oh, like, mm. well, I that, that might be a little further game. than realism, but... Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if this is the game. Uh, okay. Right, okay. Well, moving on. Well, I can't uh, wait for next... it to come out in two days for the controversy <laughs> that that's going to spawn. All right. Jesus Christ. The next game is called Mini Law, Tactical Law Enforcement Action. This surprisingly looks pretty fucking cool. Like, this reminds mm -hmm. me of an old DOS game. Like, you're, you're sort of uh, in a dystopian future. Um, you ha you're sort of a cyber cop, I guess. There's a You get points for non-lethal takedowns. Apparently, you get to upgrade your equipment. There's, like, a city that kind of works around you. Um, it looks somewhat like a sort of tactical side-scrolling game. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not 100% sure how it plays, but it looks really interesting. Huh. Cool. I'm intrigued. The next game is called Shinrai. S-H-I-N-R-A-I. -I. Broken Beyond Despair. Uh, yeah, it's a... Oh, it's got zombies in it, but it is a interactive fiction uh, kind of game. And there's, uh, for some reason, an anime witch in it with green hair. I don't know why, why that not? is. Why not? Sure, why not? not? They're allowed. Oh, here uh -oh. we go. The next game is called Sakura is. Shrine Girls. Sakura Shrine. Make Sakura Fantasy 2, you assholes. It was Whoa. supposed to come out over a year ago. Give it to me. I'm so angry. Anyways, uh, Sakura Shrine Girls. There are a bunch Make of Make Sakura girls. great again. Fuck yeah, that is. <laughs> uh, the game after that is called Eye Storm. <laughs> Generally, like, not like what you want I... when you. I wouldn't buy a game called Eye Storm, you know? I buy a game called Bone Storm. Bone Storm is ready. Yeah. Well, like not the fact it was Bone Sore, but I'm okay what with that. It? I don't. It's all right. It's a helicopter simulator, and you yeah. fly around. It looks like it's ten years old, unfortunately. But yeah, oh. into the storm. Well, never mind. 
Auto storm. But what? the next one. <laughs> Next one on August 27th. Uh, I'm going to go through these last ones quicker. Yeah, because we're actually way running over time here. Yeah. Uh, on August 27th, we have Evil Robot Traffic Jam HD. <laughs> yeah. It's a tower defense game where you have to cause a horrible traffic jam. It's Great. pretty amazing. Awesome. Next. Perfect. Next up is Parvana. <laughs> Legacy of the Lights Guard something. Uh, Lights Guardians. Mm. It's good enough. Um, Top down action adventure. Looks okay. a bit. Next up. Next up is called Size Block. Size Block is um puzzle game, top down with blocks. Blocks Next. of various sizes. Yeah. Geometric shapes, kids love them. Yeah. Oh, and this the next one looks like uh, very much an RPG maker esque game, but it's inspired by Indonesian history, which interests me quite a bit. Warriors of Vilvatipta. Yes, I wonder if it's by actual Indonesian developer. I'm not sure, but it's always good to see you know different cultures represented in these games. It's interesting. Absolutely. Next, uh, next is called Fifty Years. Uh, Fifty Years is a strat. Wait a minute, we just Did saw we just this. this. Yeah, we, we already saw did this. this one. Yeah. All right, last last day, last day. Here we go. Last day, Le Havre, the uh, inland port. If I recall correctly, that is considered like an all time classic Euro game, like a very very good Euro game. Uh, so it, okay. it looks like it's an adaptation of a board game, basically. Oh, okay. Next up is called Black Hole Hazard. Uh, action puzzle space walking game, two D. Next. Great, Blight of the Immortals. Blight of the Immortals, uh, free to play game. It's got zombies in it. Fantasy Great. strategy zombies. Slow real time cooperative up. strategy game. Last up is Frantic Freighter. Frantic Freighter. That probably doesn't have zombies in it. Optimized for VR, but does not require it. Uh, you are in space. Oh, that's neat. Uh, you're in space aboard a freighter. It's falling to fucking pieces. Basically, oh. try and keep it from falling to pieces in VR, which is a cool <laughs> idea. I like that. That is. That is. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. There's a lot of games on Steam. Some of them actually looking pretty cool. So, neat. There's some good games coming out by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. That's... That's unusual. That's <laughs> unusual had, for Steam. Bear in mind, like, Matt, we've had months of shit in this segment. Oh, the point where people demanded we cancel no, no, no. doing now this segment, because, like, moves. all the games you talk about are shit. I was like, it's not our fault. <laughs> yeah, we're not trying. No. <laughs> we don't We don't release the games. We no, we don't. what we're given. Yeah, God. Exactly. Well, that finished wraps up the show, folks. But before we go, we'd love to do some, like, massive plugging. Before I start doing that... I want to remind you, we finally have confirmation. Our, we are doing not one, but two PAX co-optional panels Yay! of PAX West. Co-optional podcast and co-optional lounge. They are going to be at PAX West. You can find them on the official schedule. 5.30 wow. p.m. in the Sphinx Theater on Saturday. The Co-Optional Lounge Live going to be playing Snake Oil and possibly something else. The Co-Optional Podcast is on Monday in the Wyvern Theater or Wyvern at 12 p.m. We also have a signing session at 1.30 in the Autograph area. That's 1.30 yeah. Autograph area. That's the only time we're going to be signing. So if you want to autograph, that is the time to go there. And they will be live streamed. So we'll let you know where to find those. Uh, but if you are coming to PAX, please do come along. We had to battle to get these damn rooms and want to prove that we deserve them. So we're going to fill did. those we motherfuckers. Fought hard for these rooms. We really did. We've got 800 person <laughs> theaters for each. We're going to fill those motherfuckers. We know we can do it. So please do come along. It's going to be great. The guests for the Corruptional Lounge will include uh, Jeff and Anna Robinson. So that's going to be great. Uh, awesome. In control and Ms. In control. <laughs> Ms. Mrs. Control. In control. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's how that relationship works i'm fairly sure one way or the other it's gonna be great it's gonna be at pax uh we're gonna be doing all sorts of things there so hopefully we'll get to see you there cool matt thank you very much for coming on the show today before you go i'd love thank to know so what, what is uh, it's our pleasure we've got two of you now we're trying to collect them all and yeah, we yeah no, we're, we're a while we're ago like that we're like yeah. chaos emeralds you are we're gonna get the shiny one at some point one way <laughs> or the other we'd love to know what's what are you doing over the next couple of weeks what's going on in your channel where can we find you uh, you can find us at uh, Super Best Friends Play in YouTube, or we have a website. Um, right now, we're we're trudging through uh, the first example of David Cage being a horrible, horrible director and game designer. You're wrong. You're, wrong. You're, You're wrong. gonna fight Jesse on this one. Fundamentally wrong. He's well, the greatest genius who ever <laughs> games in the history of games. You're wrong. All right, can someone wrong. mute his mic, sir? Because he's currently crazy. Sir, sir, um, sir. Wrong. Sir, please. Sir. Uh, we, we, we are sludging through the crap that is Omicron, the Nomad no. Soul. It's <laughs> so bad. How it's dare so you bad. such an amazing game? Oh, so bad. Anyway. A literal uh, golden god. 
<laughs> we're doing that and you can also catch our podcast uh as super best friend cast on itunes and all the regular uh podcast places and if i could take one second if i could uh, uh plug someone that isn't me if anyone is into wrestling and want to see three yeah. drunk irishmen talk about wrestling uh please check out oswreviews.com or on youtube the best thing on youtube much better than us please go see check them out <laughs> wouldn't wrestling. take much but yeah no it wouldn't take much at all. Uh, so yeah, this was this was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on, guys. Big thanks for coming on. We'll spend the next show doing three hours of wrestling talk while these guys aren't here. These losers. Please, are... please, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Normies. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Muggles. Muggles, indeed. <laughs> they don't know the glory that is Eva Marie. <laughs> You don't understand. You just don't they understand. Don't. They don't. They don't. Uh, Dodger, what's coming on your channel this week? What's going on? Uh, more backstage pass with Crendor. Hear him ruin all of the hot boys with his voices. It's quality content. Um, and then what else? I don't know. Stuff. Cool, great stuff. Come hang out. Check it out. I stream five days a week. Come watch those too. And then follow me on the social medias where you can see my cats. I, got I, tr I triggered too. someone with an Eva Marie reference, and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> good, 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 good. Perfect. Allow yourself to be seduced. You don't understand. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could talk for hours about that. Uh, Jesse, what's going on with the channel this week? What's going on? Deus Ex, homies. That's all you need to know. It's going to be a lot of Deus Ex videos and a long, long Deus Ex videos. And uh, my shout-out uh, goes to... Uh, Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley. They have finally split Devon, up. And they, they're gone, right? Devon, get the get the table, man. They're gone. Rest hey, they, they stopped doing the tables a while ago because they were too they, popular. They literally, I think, are the last bastion of what I remember of wrestling. I haven't <laughs> watched since. I if just it makes you feel retired. better, Undertaker is still around. He mostly only shows up once oh, a thank year. God. But, but when he does, <laughs> when he does, shit goes down. Trust me. He's a, he's a wizard. He is an undead wizard. Wrestling is real, guys. How can <laughs> you watch all that fake UFC know, shit? If you want to know what my dad's like, he's basically Bubba Ray Dudley. So shout out. <laughs> he actually is. I, uh, I have out, seen him shout once. Shout out. So Love it. that's what I'll say. Uh, for me, what's coming up? Uh, well, big thing, Saturday, Shoutcraft Kings, August edition. Second edition of my King of the Hill tournament. It is one and you are dead, but... If you stay on, it's a $250 a map StarCraft II tournament. We have a bunch of pro gamers, a bunch of mystery invites. It's our Royal Rumble for StarCraft. That's exactly what it is. Come and watch nice. it. We had huge viewership last time. We'd love to see you again. We had a bunch of casual viewers tuning in saying, hey, I've never seen StarCraft before. My fucking parents watched it for an hour, for God's Aww. sake. They don't even know what a StarCraft is. Tune in. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Total Biscuit. We're kicking off 9 a.m., that is Eastern Time on Twitch.tv slash Total Biscuit. All the spoiler-free VODs available over on YouTube.com slash Total Biscuit, which is my second StarCraft channel. And all of the VODs from last month, if you missed it, if you missed the epic runs, if you missed the surprises, go watch it. It's going to happen. It's going to be great. It is happening this Saturday on the 27th. I cannot wait to bring you some really awesome StarCraft action. Outside of that, I've started making some videos again. Obviously, I had, had a week off for uh, medical stuff. I'm back on it. I just did 16 minutes of talking about options, menus, and DS. Sex. It's going to get more views than Jesse's Let's Play, and <laughs> we're going to be super happy about that. We already have over 100,000 views in two hours yeah, of sure nothing works. but field of view sliders all the time, everywhere. If you needed proof that the internet was full of idiots, there you go. 130,000 <laughs> views, actually. 130,000 views as of right now. 16 dummies. and a half minutes of field of view sliders. Go do it. You know you want it. It is what you need in your life. There, I'm going to be doing little things, Oculus and all sorts oh, of stuff like God. that. I want to check out this this tower game thing. I want to check out Worms. I got shit loads of stuff to look at. I'm going to look at Tempest. That's got pirates in it. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. Cool. Excellent. Also, next few weeks, you're going to be seeing some stuff about my new PC. I am um, getting sponsored by someone because I don't want to pay for that shit. Also, I want someone to build me one that won't suck. We're going to do a live build. It's going to be streamed. It's going to be Whoa. amazing. Uh, it's going to, yeah, it's basically the same. I think it's the same guys that built Dead Mouse's PC. You're going to build our PC. It's going to be, cool. it's going to be pretty Jesus fucking fuck. cool. We're going to do a live streaming of it. You're going to see some awesome stuff. We're going to put some new tight nexus in it yeah i'm looking forward to end. it 
<laughs> you mean DJs? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I can do that. I've, right. I've done that before. Yeah. 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 I've DJ. I've done that. I've done the DJ. I've done that. I heard you <laughs> yeah. spin in a warehouse in Manchester one time. So. More importantly, I'm gonna have a PC that doesn't fucking randomly break. So you uh, know that's the dream. That that which is kind of important. You know, we just need to come up with a cool name for that machine. So that's gonna happen. Just keep an eye on my Twitter for that. You'll you'll hear about that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. If you want some serious hardware porn? It is going to be just that. Linus isn't getting anywhere near it. Trust me. That I like it. Canadian what about bastard. His tips? No. <laughs> Oh, he drops everything. Don't do it. Uh, that's, I think, pretty much about it. Thank you very much for watching the show. We'll be back next week. I believe, I do need to double confirm this, but there's a soft confirmation on next week's guest being Adam Kovic. What? So, Mr. Adam Kovic that is, is oh, that dick. <laughs> yeah, second appearance on the show. Uh, not 100% confirmed yet. Soft confirmation on that. Need to, oh. him to email me back this week. But he did say, yes, he'd love to come on this uh, next week. So, hopefully that'll happen. Thank you very much for the, watching the Corruptional Podcast. Big thanks to our sponsor today, Crunchyroll.com slash Total Biscuit. Get unlimited anime and at least several minutes of banana, banana cats. The, banania. Banania. Banania cats. Sponsored by yeah. Banania. Thank you very much, folks. Big thanks to Mr. Matt McMuscles for coming on the show. Follow him on Twitter. Go watch him and the super best friends on the YouTube. And please do watch our YouTube channels. We need that to live. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. So long. So long.